to a very special end of 2016 Nerdist Podcast, number 845. This episode brought to you by the enhanced editions of George R. 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 Martin's Game of Thrones books are available exclusively on iBooks, including the just-released A Storm of Swords Enhanced Edition. Uh, this has interactive character maps, uh, hundreds of author notes, beautiful illustrations, a sigil guide, much more. All the extras uh, bring the adventure to life and help you stay on top of the storylines. A Storm of Swords Enhanced Edition, exclusively on iBooks at apple.co slash Game of Thrones. And now, let us journey over to the fine Nerdist Community Court Board. For happenings that are relevant to you, the Nerdist audience. Um, so this is really nice. Uh, love is Love is a benefit comic anthology from IDW Publishing and support from DC Comics. Uh, celebrating love in all of its forms, which is a wonderful sentiment for the end of the year and the holidays. All the proceeds from this comic uh, go towards supporting the survivors and family of the victims of the tragic Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting. In Florida, uh, all the contributors throughout the comic book uh, in community donated their time uh, and their talents to this effort. Uh, there are one to two page stories, pinups, etc. Uh, and this is just a one shot deal that goes on sale December 28th. It's print and digital. Uh, digital versions have exclusive digital content available via Comixology. And there's characters from the DC Universe, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, but also uh, from other universes, Harry Potter, Archie, The Spirit, and more. So please support this cause uh, and pick up Love is Love uh, in person or digitally from IDW Publishing. This is the hostful that you've all, translation, 12% of you, have been asking for for a while. Uh, the Sister Wives and I got together a few weeks back because we can't not... I know it's been difficult, the scheduling. Listen, Matt is writing on the Goldbergs. Jonah's doing, like, four shows. Uh, <laughs> my schedule sucks. So to get us all together in the same room, like, when Jonah's doing Hidden America, he's all, he is hidden in America if you follow his Instagram feed, you'll see what I mean. But uh, yeah, he's all over the place. So we're, we're, we do the best we can. But we will always get together for hostfuls when we can. But, uh, but I do want to say, uh, if you're new to the Nerdist Podcast this year or you have been a fan for a long time, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, navigating all the sort of <laughs> evolutions and iterations of the Nerdist Podcast. Uh, I know it's fun when Matt and Joan are on, and, and believe me, I would love to have them on all the time. It's just not, it's just not possible with their, with their schedules. But what an incredible year of people that we talk to, and and uh, and I never, it never fails to amaze me. Like when I get oh, nervous, oh, I don't know how this one person's going to be. Oh, they turned out to be amazing. So this is still, you know, I always said we do this as long as it's fun. It's still fun. It's it's really a learning experience for me to get to pick people's brains and find out what they're like in conversation. And these are conversations. They're not interviews. I really think they're conversations. So thank you for helping us uh, stay in the podcast game. I mean, our, our numbers seem to keep going up and I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's more to come in 2017. Uh, happy holidays to you. I adore you and uh, really appreciate all the support that you've given us. For this, uh, for this whole, this little thing that was just a, hey, let's do this because we love it and because we want to make something no one else can control. And it turned out to be a thing that we have <laughs> built a foundation around. So take that as a lesson, my friend. And again, happy and happy and safe holidays. Uh, one more sponsorship brought to you by Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. So fresh, high-quality ingredients are better for you. Uh, they're better for your body. Um, Blue Apron has been amazing. They established a, a partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. And as a result, uh, they have seafood that is sourced sustainably under standards developed in partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. The beef is humanely raised. I mean, it's, it's, it's all good for our culture, not just good for your body. Um, I love Blue Apron. I got it for my mom. I got it for my cousins. They adore it. Uh, for less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. So you're not just jamming something in a microwave. You get the stuff, and then you actually get to feel like <laughs> involved. And it's all types of cuisine, everything. It's delicious. So check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free uh, with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash nerdist. Uh, it will feel good. 
to make this delicious food and put it in your body. And then uh, it's good for the environment as well. That's blueapron.com slash Nerdist. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right. Thanks to them for sponsoring this. Hostful podcast number 845, Katie Levine. Roll the last podcast of the year. Ha <laughs> 2016. The year of no chill. Now entering Nerdist.com. No, this is um, when, they, <laughs> when they, they become snake oil salesmen. They have um, a. Yeah, I think it's on like a timer more so than it is the act break for the show. Of course not, Marge. Just for the rest of his life. He said it was an accident. He didn't want to have it. Blah, 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 blah. Do, 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 do. Check. Beep, boop, boop. I'm sorry, I have to turn off Simpsons World now. Oh. I oh, I thought, you were, I thought we were watching the marathon. That's what I thought when I walked in. No, no, no. We're just watching... Uh, Why aren't you on board with the marathon, Chris? We're watching Simpsons TV on that old... I like the uh, marathon. Well, I loved the now, last time they did it because it was neat watching it with all the same people at the same time. Right. Yeah. But this yeah. one's... I, I know it's fun to just turn it on, and which you actually get on... Yeah, on you can put it on a randomizer. Simpsons TV. It has all these different channels, and then Simpsons World. It's great. Simpsons World is great. I always just go to season seven, the best season. What's, let's look at what's go- uh, season like seven. You want to see what's on season seven? Here's yeah. what's on season seven of The Simpsons. This is going to fucking blow your mind how many yeah. of these episodes are in season seven. Okay, okay it the, starts off with the part two. The part two of Who Shot Mr. Burns, Radioactive Man, uh, Home oh. Sweet Diddly Dum Doodly. Okay, that's, oh, when, that's um, when I have the, their, or, their they, they foster the parents Flanders. are the Bart Flanders. sells his soul. Okay. Lisa the Vegetarian. Treehouse of Horror 6, which has Homer in the three worlds. Erotic Cakes. King Size size Homer, Homer. (laughs) where he gains weight. I don't look like a weirdo. I'll take the Moo Moo. Mother Simpson, where he he talks his mother. Sideshow Bob's Last Gleaming. Uh, The 138th episode. Team Homer, where they do the Pin Pals. Oh, yeah. Season 7. Where George George Bush, what is his neighbor? The Class Struggle, where she keeps making the same suit over and over. Chanel Dress. Uh... Lisa, they're going to Homer the Smithers, where Smithers goes on vacation okay. and Homer takes over. 
Uh, the Day the Violence Died, which is the Chester J. Lampwick when episode. He, when he finds the creator of Itchy and Scratchy. Uh, Fish Called Selma. Where oh, and he she marries Troy McClure. That's right. Huh? Uh, Bart on the Bar gets a license. Wow. I remember that one. 22 short films about Springfield. Okay. Uh, Raging Abe Simpson, The Fighting Hellfish. That's right. Much and of Much of Pooh about nothing. And then uh, Homer Palooza. Yeah, it goes and up. then wow, what a, Four Foot Two. I remember like this is what I was... Uh, I realize I've been watching the show for a very long time. I, season six. Let's look through season six because I think I m- it might be p- pound for pound. You got monorail and stuff in there, right? Okay, let's see. Now we're going to look at season six. Okay. Bard of Darkness when he breaks, breaks his, his leg. leg. Great. Yeah. Lisa's rival. Yep. Another Simpson Clip Show. Clip show. <laughs> Itchy and Scratchy Land. Itchy and Scratchy Land is, is, is great. Sideshow Bob Roberts Bart's is girlfriend fun. is great. Treehouse of Horror 5 With where the they do The Shining. Yeah. Uh, Bart's the Shining. The Shining. Do you want to get sued? <laughs> uh, kill Bart. Kill Bart. Oh, this one was just on. This is the S- Grandpa Simpson yeah. versus sexual inanity. Palmer Batman. That's the, the gummy Venus de Milo. Fear of Flying, where Marge is... Lowenstein. A, yes, where Marge's dad turns out to be a flight attendant. Yeah. Oh, the Stonecutters. Stonecutters Stone Cutters. is good. Uh, oh, the story oh, the birth of Maggie's of, that's birth. That's a sweet one. Uh, when Bart's Homer c- becomes crusty. Which is okay. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's Don't later. tread on me on his ass, right? Yeah, well, Stars Burns. The uh, critic crossover. Bullfrogs, I'd have called them Chez Wuzzles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a star, uh, yeah, the, the, Simps, the uh, critic crossover is very fun. Oh, yeah. the, the Greyhound episodes. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, when uh, Gums Bleeding Gums, Gums dies. Yeah. Marge becomes a cop. Okay. Now, oh, Lemon of Troy, guys, come on. Season eight. Was that your season? I, season eight for me. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. So I picked season seven. Jonah's got season six, and, and Matt has season eight, which has starts you only with move a... twice. My favorite episode of The Simpsons. Yes, that's great. Hank Scorpio of the Globex Corporation. Yes, uh, mostly improvised lines from from Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks. Then uh, Homer becomes a boxer and gets uh, Dredrick Tatum. Yes, beats the snot out of him, and then it just ends. Rodney Dangerfield. And that's the one where it ends with Mo just with that fan that carries him around. Oh it's yeah, that weird montage of him uh, like yeah. traveling. Around. Yes, uh, there's a Dangerfield episode. Uh, uh, Millhouse gets the parents get divorced. Oh, that is. A good oh, that's episode. what kind of borrow a feeling. Oh, yep. where she? Yeah. Then uh, Lisa starts dating. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Homer finds his coyote spirit animal. After oh, the that's chili the chili cook-off. I'm Johnny missing Cash it. It's happening voice. right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're go to the and then you have the X Files uh, episodes. Yeah. yeah. See, you see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, Marge, um, your gimbals. What's the? <laughs> 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 oh, that's the uh, itchy and scratchy and poochy. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Twisted World of Marge Simpson, which yeah. is a pretzel wagon. Yeah, that was with Jack Lemon. Itchy, scratchy, and poochy. Oh, Come on, poochy. Okay. Homer's phobia with John oh. Waters. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the Simpsons brother Niles hard. and Fraser. That's oh, David beer and beer Baron, beer Baron, and the Shit. beer Baron. And Great when, oh. when Kerbopel and Skinner start hooking up, yep. yeah. And then when they get that fancy dog. And when when uh, Lisa starts helping Burns and he becomes good, yeah. and then he wants to make money off of He makes uh, slurry? Yeah. He uh, makes a slurry. And then. Oh, oh the Grimy anime. Grimes. Wow. Boy, season eight is pretty good. Yeah. But I still, you know, Man, nope, I, I don't know. I think, I think I we all picked wisely. I think I win. <laughs> so six, seven, and eight. Yeah. If you're going to watch The I'm Simpsons. Sure, uh, and I'm sure five is pretty great. I'm sure <laughs> four is great. Four is great. They're all lovely. They're all great. <laughs> Someone, uh, Caitlin Gill, a very funny comic, was trying to tell me that somewhere in like the late teens, mm. uh, there's like a three season like uh, golden era that happens mm. like again. Oh, like later, like way later after a lot of people stopped, like a lot of our generation stopped watching. There was another like, like hit after hit. That's so mind blowing to think that show's going to go for 30 years. Fucking 30 years. Yeah. Someone could like someone was probably got like they hooked up in high school when the Simpsons came on, got pregnant. I don't know why it had to be high school. Then that person (laughs) grew up. That person could have had kids. I mean, it's like it. Yeah. Multi-generational. It's insane. Well, this is the Hostful Podcast? Yes, this is the Hostful Podcast. I forget. This is the Simpsons yeah. Podcast. This is the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, uh, is, Allie is Gertz. This is, I, I'm we'll Allie Gertz. Shortly. Allie could do the uh, theme song for yeah. us. That'd be, Julia's that'd be coming fantastic. in. It's going to be great. That'd be yeah. fantastic. Well, everyone's so... Everyone's been, been so busy, and people always ask for the Hostful episodes, and I say, I say to people... 
Guys no, and ladies. No, no house fools. That's what you say. <laughs> I say I you sense. want them, then absolutely not. Because <laughs> my goal is just to voice. fuck people over. <laughs> I like fucking the fans over. That's what I do. I don't like people to be happy. It's the only reason you got fans is to fuck them over. It was a long con, <laughs> but it's working out nicely. I do. I always find it interesting when people are mad at a whatever it is, a company or a franchise, and they go, they're just fucking the fans over because of greed. And I always go, how does that make sense exactly? Why would you fuck your fans over? If you were greedy, you would just want to keep them happy. Now, if you just want to fuck yeah. them over, that would make you insidious, but then maybe you wouldn't be as greedy because then you'd lose well, them. Well, what if you're keeping them happy with free content and then you need to charge them for pay content? That's how you can be greedy. I guess that's so. That's a good point. I don't Guys, know. this hostful podcast is four ninety nine. It's not any <laughs> amount of money. <laughs> don't worry, it's already been taken out of your accounts. It is not any amount of money. Guys, I, we'd, we'd be making tens of dollars if that were the case. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> Even if I ever did do a subscription version of the podcast, there would always be the free version of the podcast. Yeah, I've often thought about not doing what version. it would look like if, you know, I don't know. Whenever I get my shit together to make an app for it, that. Uh, there could be like a premium version of the podcast with no commercials and I mean no sponsorships or anything, and then still but still the free version with the sponsorships. Yeah, I guess you'd have to up the amount of commercials in a non-subscription version. No, of I wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, then, well, then no you got to make it worth it. So I think you should do about a half hour <laughs> <Yeah>. commercials. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this uh, this whether or not we should have commercial chat is brought to you by <laughs> Sleep Number, and then we just yeah. get Paul Shear to read all our commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be totally happy with that. I'd be totally happy with that. But we're doing Sketchfest this next year. Yeah, January twenty first. We're in a big theater. Oh, cool. Hope people show up for that. I'm sure they will. Six, they seven people do. will be there. I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as we're there, as long as we're there it doesn't there. matter. As long as Katie's I'll be there, half listening. In from, uh, from Reno. But man, what a, what, a, what a crazy year it's been for everyone. And so that's why it's been so difficult to get the sister wives together. Because Matt's Sorry, working I just all looked the over time. my shoulder and saw a prancing antelope. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. It's an impala. Oh, I thought he was like. Oh, it's late. an impala? <laughs> it is an impala. I thought he was. <laughs> Foolish me. I thought it was just a massive fart <laughs> propelling <No>. it forward. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt, Matt has been working on the Goldbergs. Yep. So that's taking up full time and then taking uh, up a lot of time. Working on the uh, the IVF. Ever IVF. ever pushing forward to become a Jewish person, Matt. Yeah, I'm just trying as hard as <laughs> I can. You're, married you're an honorary or... Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to be in that family. <laughs> Jonah's been working on a million. Boy, you went right from Mystery Science Theater right to Hidden America. You like you came off of uh, Meltdown, MST, yeah. Hidden America. You're already in season two. It was. It went like Hidden America ended up editing as we started writing MST, and then as we finished up writing MST, we were shooting um, Meltdown, and as we were editing Meltdown, we or as we were. No, right. Shooting meltdown. We were writing the next season of Hidden America, and then I had to take breaks from that to shoot Mystery Science Theater 3000. You're and regular now. Joss Whedon. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell him that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> he might quit Twitter again. Well, it's amazing that. Uh, I mean, when you really look, just sort of talking about 30 years of The Simpsons. Now this is about seven years of the podcast, and then just seeing what has transpired in that time. I mean, when we started the podcast, Jonah, Jonah was still Freeloader's Guide, Jonah. No, no, I was, I was writing on... Um, you were starting to write, we had just started writing, uh, you just started working on Web Soup. Web, web Soup, we had been doing for about a year. About a year, yeah. About about a year. Uh, Chris, I don't want to alarm anyone, but uh, out that window, we're in the sky. <laughs> no, 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 man. <laughs> uh, guys, guys, help me. It's a screen uh, saver. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's not, we're not on an airplane all of a sudden. The TV just has a screen saver. I don't understand TV. We're recording in my house, and we're in the, the room that has the TV in it, and uh, Matt uh, was uh, yeah, I think it's upset because Apple TV just went into... The sky... Uh, I love it. I like love a, uh, the new Apple TV. is is worth it alone for the screensavers. The screensavers are pretty great. They're you don't have great. to look at photos of nature anymore. No, no. I like yeah. to do city flyovers. Yeah. Oh, look at Paris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at London. <laughs> Paris. I haven't seen Paris yet. Yeah, I've seen Paris, I've seen and San London Francisco, and New, York. New York, and London, San Francisco, oh. and uh, Hawaii. Paris is special. They give it maybe it knows that you're Hawaiian, and it's that, maybe it that's does. how smart it is. That's why I see all those Moana ads. It just shows it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to see a movie the other day, and someone behind, uh, in front of me was like, "One for Mona," and I wanted to punch him in the back <laughs> of the head. <laughs> Moana. <laughs> Stupid Hallies. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to see it. Though. Come in here and howling shit up. I'm, I'm looking forward to that movie. Made a ton of money. 
good. Meet good for Disney. Is good. Is it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that it can't get it. It's got The Rock. Come on. I love The Rock. I love The Rock too. I finally on a plane. I finally watched uh, Central Intelligence, and yep. it's a very fun movie. Uh, but there's a scene that made me, and I know I was on a plane, so give me that. But I Wait, was. Did you cry during Central I, Intelligence? You know, I tear up when I say I cry on planes. Like I tear up. This one, I started to cry. I started to convulse <laughs> during Central, Central Intelligence. Intelligence. So during Central Intelligence. So The Rock is a fat kid the in high school. Sony Pictures classics. Sony uh, Pictures uh, <laughs> classics. The, all you need for this movie Fox is a big, ha- a big yeah, heart, Fox Fox Lights. a little heart. Jane Austen's Johnson. Central Intelligence. Yes. It's a uh, prequel to La La Land. Right. Uh, okay. so there's, there's, you know, the whole idea is that he's like a, uh, like a fat kid uh, in high school, and he gets made fun of by this bully. Uh, you know, fast forward years later, he looks like The Rock because he is, uh, he's Dwayne Johnson, sure. and he's, uh, he's confronted by his childhood bully, played great by uh, Jason Bateman. And then, uh, like, Jason Bateman's just tearing him down. And then Kevin Hart's going, come on, get him. Come on, you could take him. And then The Rock is kind of froze. He's kind of freezes up. Dwayne Johnson freezes up and, like, doesn't know how to handle the situation. Then looks into a reflection and sees his high school self. And then you started crying. And then I started to cry. <laughs> and then I, and I, 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 I might have said this out loud. The only weight you can't lose is in your eyes. Oh, Jonah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I was, cry- I was crying. Every, every hard, throw up Thursday post picture that you post. And all, that's all I see every time I look in the mirror. You uh, never get past... You never get past your 13 to 15 year old self. You what is it about those years? Because also, I have a theory that most people's favorite movie or uh, music or something like very significant to them creatively uh, is like 12. That's the age I always say. Like, it's like when I, I ask a lot of people, what's your favorite movie? They say it, and it usually comes out around when they're 12. I have a couple theories on that. Number one, <clears throat> you're, you're, you're flooding with hormones at that time, and I think it just kind of flash fries your psyche to the back of your brain. <laughs> yeah. And number two, I mean, you know, when you think about the things that impact you the most, it's because they change your worldview. Mm-hmm. But you have a very limited worldview when you're 12. So when you see something like, you know, like Ghost for me, Ghostbusters or Caddyshack or The Jerk or whatever, and not having any, re- any other reference points <clears throat> for, like, adult humor, those things just – they're so life-changing. But the older you get, the less surprised you can be because you've yeah. seen so much. So you just – you just don't have as many life altering experiences as the older you get. You're like, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but but when you're that age, I think you're also attaching that that chunk of discovery as well as, oh, what a great fun thing. And then also your identity is forming. So then on top of all that, your identity is just sort of is just sort of creating this crust around all of it because you're you're kind of deciding like what drives you and what do you want and who yeah. are you and you know and and that's I think that's why. You know, that, that's why now when you hear people talk about things from the 90s and they go, oh, boy, you know, was it any better than Saved by the Bell? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It's so much better. Yeah, a lot of things were better. Yeah. But if you were that, if you were like 12 or 13 when that show came out, that was like April, yeah. like April Richardson. Yeah, and that's why you can't really fault anybody for, you know, liking certain bands because it's just because they were at the age where it was the... Finally. Uh, thank you, Jonah. No, I... I, I <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for you to apologize about this Dave Matthews thing for seven let's, years. Let the record show. Seven if years. we go back in time, it was Hardwick. <laughs> it was Hardwick who brought it up. Who oh, put where it did in I put those records? Where did I, oh my God, that's right. The first like two years of podcast. <laughs> Look at the description. Of Chris me. does this. Jonah does this. And Matt yes. loves the Dave Matthews <laughs> yeah, man for two that. years. It was some. It was always like somehow Matt still loves the Dave yeah. Matthews. Yeah. I think it and, beca- <laughs> and that's what it was always like. But everyone put it on me because I look like yeah. I'm like and I'm sir. convinced that's why we've never had dave matthews on the podcast because they someone in the group goes and looks at you know his yeah. management goes looks at the description of the they podcast and they just see that and they're just oh my god i think i th- i love his work in don't mess with a zohan sure who does it yeah he's, he's really actor, good in it very funny uh well so you discovered dave matthews at 12 no uh ish it was like yeah. 93 so it was like i was 10 but you know is he t- did he tour this year yeah i went uh in irvine I watched him close down Irvine. How was it? It was great. It was a great. What concert. does he play at this point? Do the jams vary? Like, the does it? Man has you know the catalog is huge. He's got 180 songs. But does he play like if he plays Crash into Me? At, yeah. 
a show like that you, you know, just saw one the crash into pre- me sometimes you'll get the the dixieland outro sometimes you get like a straight outro it just dixieland so he buries outro it sounds he pretty buries rad it. so is it is does does this does it change in the middle where it's like now we're going to do these kind of semi improvised breakdowns in the middle or what is it no it it, it, it depends like there's a lot of different jams they do a lot of them you've heard but then, you know, the newer songs, you go and you hear, like, something off Big Whiskey, and then you hear, like, there's a six-minute jam in the middle of a song you've never heard before. That's, that's fun. Yeah. It's how, not like how, fish. How new does it feel when you're watching, like, a jam? Do you go, oh, I recognize that part from a live uh, album or recording? No, you know, it depends. Like, for me, it had been a couple of years since I'd seen them. I missed the previous year because of my bachelor party. I had bought tickets, but I had to miss it. And so, like, it had been a, a year-long years. bachelor party? I did. Chris, yeah. it was Crazy. great. Yeah, uh, he had to go to rehab after, it. Chris. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> so I really should have been there to help him through that. <laughs> yeah, really. It was nuts. Well, it didn't take. I still love sheet cake. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bigger fan of blanket cake. Speaking of cake on the sheets, how's the IVF going? Uh, we implanted an embryo. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. Hey, come on, you guys. Oh, hey. that's great. Don't yeah. That was yeah. good. It was good. We put the, we put we put a female embryo in on Wednesday. Yep. Uh, and then she's taking a blood test December second to see if she's pregnant. For anyone who doesn't know, Matt and Dory started a podcast to chronicle their journey. We did. And uh, and it's great. What a great idea. I mean, I'm glad you guys were open to that because I I really think. Not only is it will it be interesting for people to hear the process, but I think it will also help demystify. I think it'll help people who are considering it. It's fascinating that uh, like we had just like when we started doing it, we had talked to people in our lives and like people you wouldn't know have already gone through this, and then we started to find a lot of people that I know and that she knows have done IVF or are doing IVF, and a lot of us at the same clinic. At California Fertility Partners in Westwood, and uh, it just became like, oh, we should sort of like, why is this such a weird stigma on mm-hmm. this? And like, I would talk about it openly, and then, you know, a relative of ours had the same thing as me, but we, they had never mentioned it out loud, and then I was talking about it, and then they were like, oh, well, same thing with me. And is like, the podcast called Defying God's Will? <laughs> That's the subtitle. <laughs> it's close. I think it's called Matt and Dory's Excellent Podcast. That's Excellent great. Adventure. That's it's great. Excellent no, I, Adventure. I did see, Excellent I did, Adventure. I, did, I, did, I, did, I think adventure. I saw your post uh, about that. Please subscribe on uh, iTunes. We appreciate it. Uh, it's a it's a good podcast because like we really like do it. The content we get not only is it like what we've gone through that week because it's constantly something. Uh, but we take questions. People email us. We have a voicemail line. Oh, that's uh, great. And people call us. Are you going to take it th- – when she gets pregnant, are you going to take it through the pregnancy? I or think are you we're going to th- take it through our deaths. Okay. Yeah. Great. I mean, so. it, it, is a, it is pretty cool because if you guys start it now, the idea of this morphing podcast where you, yeah. can, you, know, you can even change the title as yeah. it goes along, year one, year two. Well, once people kind of get comfortable – like once people are in – Listening to you guys, yeah. then it 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 can it can transition. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting too because then it can turn into like a parenting podcast. Are you going to do it again, like, or is she, are you guys going to do one? We, well, I'll tell you what. If we do, we want to have two kids, uh, if this if this female embryo doesn't take, we have a male embryo that's rated much higher than this female one. <sighs> Fucking Hollywood. I mean, <laughs> come on, come on, folks. <laughs> Right, no, no, that was great. No, it's a okay. great joke. Okay. Why are you saying, "Come on, it's not funny"? All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I, I someone's laughing on a train right now. Right. Yeah, I or laughed. I was just joke. yelling at myself in my head. Like, no, oh, no. Also, it was a little delayed because I couldn't think of a better one, and there, there <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, yeah, right, that's okay, good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we had two. We had, we did two rounds of IVF. We ended up getting two viable embryos, and they every clinic rates them differently. This so this clinic rates it on a scale of one to five, and the female embryo was three point five. And then our doctor got very excited about the male embryo, which is 4.5. It's like, this is a great embryo. I would put this one in. But we want to have a girl. And we decided to put in the girl embryo that's rated a 3.5. And if that doesn't take, we're going to do another round of IVF to try to get a viable female embryo. So what do you... I, I'm curious... So we want a girl and a boy. I'm curious about the two kids thing, because Lydia wants two kids. Mm-hmm. And I keep, I keep making this joke that she never finds funny, where I'm like... I'll get you another cat, but she's like, no, <laughs> no, we're having two kids. And then, uh, 
and twins are very high occurrence in her in her uh-huh. genetic oh, landscape apparently. Yeah. But what I, to me, one sounds like the perfect number. It's like oh, one kid you can just throw them in a bjorn and take off. Like two kids, you're an only you got to wrangle. Well, you got to wrangle two kids. You know, if you stagger it, you know, if you stagger the children, I think it just one becomes, can help the other. Yeah, it's like not you that know. it happened to me, but. <laughs> 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 How much older is Adam? Three, three, three years, years older. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Lydia's sister's four years older than her. My sibling, my closest, is seven years older than me, guys. Yeah, but nice. then Lydia's sister just had her third baby, and they're it, and they're all like three, two newborn. Like they're right on top. Oh, of that's your great. Like her Irish, sister, Irish sister got, twins. Irish twins. Yeah, her si- and they're Irish. Her sister literally got pregnant, like almost. Immediately after coming home from the hospital, with the so she had a C-section. That's cool. <laughs> she, yeah, uh, I think she did. But uh, so why two? What is it about two? Uh, part of it's like you know we look at our dog Bo and we think, man, if you had another dog, it'd be a lot easier on us because you guys could just occupy each other. But they can plot against you. Well, that's fine too. But sure. I think it's just Menendez. I think it's good. She comes. She comes from a tightly knit group of <laughs> three tightly. siblings. I am. I feel like an only child. I'm a different family unit than my other siblings. Yes. But, uh, you know, she growing up with siblings, she thinks it's very important. And then I always get like sad at weddings when I ha- when I hear speeches from siblings, and the siblings are like so close to the person getting married, and I'm like, huh, that must be nice. Yeah, isn't that? Well, was, that's why we didn't it. do speeches at our wedding. <laughs> yeah, just didn't want to have any. Yeah. I was just too too scared. No, yeah, too scared of drunk comedians at a wedding getting up and trying to be funny. Yeah, no, that's why we forego the same thing. <laughs> that's what, you, yeah. you didn't. didn't you it. sort of. No, you didn't really do. No, that. we didn't do speeches or anything yeah. like that. No. Oh, well, I got plenty in for both of you guys. Uh, yeah, we had plenty of speeches. <laughs> By plenty, you just mean your dad's. Yeah, my yeah. dad's speech. <laughs> which we were, I was talking about it last night with Dory. I was out there building a fire in the backyard, and uh, my buddy Andy Secunda, he was over, and we were just talking about Very funny man. Yeah, very funny man. And we were talking about the very, very funny. me trying to build the fire, and the Dory goes, Two you days. know, he was almost an Eagle Scout. And then... Uh, I'm just like, yes, I was. Uh, my dad's fond of bringing that up. And then Dory was like, what was his wedding speech? I was like, I'm not sure of the gist. Like, I'm not sure of the whole speech, but the gist of it was uh, he may not seem like it, but he eventually always comes through <laughs> as yeah. I'm trying to build a fire. It almost kind of yeah. sounded like, yeah, it was a, there was a fire building thing, and I thought it had something to do with – I thought it was the opposite. I, I, to me, it sort of it, – if I'm remembering Whatever correctly, it was like – from it, I don't know. It was like <laughs> – but <laughs> I'm not even sure there was a grander message. It was almost like he had something he wanted to get off his chest, yeah. and it was about a fire that you never finished or something. It was really and it weird. was just—it just was—it was, it was it just was, back in yeah. there. It was interesting. What it really felt like to me was like the boy is getting more attention than me. <laughs> I'll, I'll handle this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was interesting. But yeah, so two kids, I think, is going to be, I think that's a good number of children. First edition have. of the Myra Method. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My hands are fat, that's me. That was the second edition. Uh, uh, you recently, you recently a year of marriage? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And also recently another year of <clears throat> aged? Yep, another year aged. I just, yeah. I just had my birthday. Now I've been married for three months now. Three beautiful months. Three months. How's it feel? Oh, uh, well, it's great. I mean, it's it's great. It's the same but different. Uh, yeah, hey, it's great. I was asking him. All right, I'm just saying. We in general, all know. It's how you I mean, like we were already living marriage. together before, yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it it feels the same. But there's this sort of level of like, hey, we got each other's backs. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. in terms of we're we're not gonna like it. It it's meaningful. Yep. In the sense that, and I'm not saying that just being in a just having a boyfriend girlfriend or whatever type of a, that type of significant other relationship isn't significant it, it just there's just something it just feels like a layer a couple layers deeper and it's kind of nice you look over like oh hey that's my wife hey come on now i'm a husband you know yeah. and oh, yeah. uh japan was amazing what an incredible place to take a honeymoon holy shit look like it i recommend like you had a lot of fish do we do we do we a podcast so after you no. got back from no we haven't done one since no. before the wedding yeah what yeah or we just talked about it yeah, I don't know. We didn't really. I don't think we've. Everything's blurring We together. didn't really talk about it. But in a nutshell, <clears throat> uh, I highly recommend. You can get so many places in Japan on the bullet train within a couple hours. You know, we the, ta- Takayama, uh, Hakone, Nara, Kyoto. You know, Tokyo was its own thing. But when you're there, a couple days in Tokyo, and then just get out of that. You know, just yeah. go out and see the countryside. It's it's just it's such an amazing place. That's Holy great. crap! So they always say Tokyo when you're there, you're family. 
<laughs> Who says that? Yeah, it's a Tokyo. That sounds like Olive Garden. Garden. Yeah, no, I think it's Tokyo. I don't no, know. I think you I just like. I think you're thinking sure noodles. When you're I there. think there's a okay, noodle. In your, in your definition of yeah. Japan, is there a never-ending pasta bowl? Yeah, and breadsticks. No, that's that's Olive Garden. No, no, no. You're, see, you're thinking of you're ramen mistaken. and chopsticks. You're no. starting to combine Tokyo noodles Japan. and. Uh, we really Japan. did. We really did try because I'm not a big cooked fish eater. But yeah. I didn't want to be. Wait, you're not a big cooked fish eater. You no. like raw fish. I like I like sushi, okay. but I don't love like if someone brought me cooked salmon, I wouldn't be able to uh, oh, tolerate yeah. it. It's great. It's all flaky. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and just like licking an aquarium. So I, uh, but I said, you know, we're gonna go and we're gonna have the experience. We're gonna, you know, whatever they put in front of us. We're, you know, let's eat it. And uh, but then after about a week, it was we ate so many fish faces because they don't. Over there, we're eating these like seven, eight, ten course meals. Everything was really small each yeah. course, but it was just like a fish course, and then a shellfish course, and then another fish course, and then a, and then like three soup courses, but all very, very small. Yeah. Soup. But uh, yeah, but they don't. Uh, and then the rice courses last, and they don't. Uh, they don't disguise any of the. They don't disguise anything you're eating, which I think is probably the right way to do it. Probably, but uh, yeah. boy, we ate so many fish faces. Holy crap. Holy crap. Did that you come back awesome. hungry? Or Well, the last night we were there, we found probably the best Italian restaurant I've ever eaten at in Kyoto. That's probably what I was thinking of. When you're there, your family. <laughs> yeah. It was not Olive Garden. <laughs> it was not Olive Garden. It was uh, Bonsai Garden. Oh, I like what you did there. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like what I did there. <laughs> Sorry. You did it. But it, uh, but it was really good. I was really... I posted one picture of... It was a, a fish on a stick... Mm-hmm. This place we were staying had a stream in the back of it, and so every, almost everything that you ate there, they caught in the oh, stream. Oh, cool. And uh, this person uh, wrote this really long diatribe about uh, being vegetarian. And I sort of felt like, well, I don't, you don't have to follow me. Yeah, no, good know, for them, not for you. I don't know why you have to... I mean, if I posted about meat on your page, you probably wouldn't think that was super cool. Yeah. So, of course, I look at this person's page. 70% of the pictures are just mirror selfies, but with like 20 vegetarian and vegan hashtags. I'm like, I don't uh, know if that yeah. really helps. Oh, uh, I see. Promote like the. Doing it for them. Maybe you Not don't. For I, I don't know. I just kind of feel like, do we. It's great if you, if you find vegetarianism and veganism. If, that, if that's great for your life, fantastic. I don't begrudge anyone anything, but, but why, why go some, to someone else's thing and go. You're not doing this right. Fuck you. You sh- well, I don't know. You don't have to come here. You can, yeah, you can that's, go other places. That's an odd part of, uh, I think, of Instagram is that people can post on. It's your personal space they're posting on. Well, yeah, and Felicia posted a picture of Thanksgiving turkey, and a bunch of people yelled at her on Facebook, like, "This is offensive." Like, but you don't have to go here. You can oh, uh, follow Lydia, other. Lydia posted a picture of her uh, gun training, like yeah. a video of her gun training, which was so rad looking. Uh, when she was doing, she was working on like the up close yeah. stuff, um, and then like it's like someone like was like this is glorifying gun violence, and like uh, Lydia had like the sweetest response. She's like she's like please don't come into my space and say negative things. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah, she she's been she's been weapons training because you know she wants to do like action movies yeah. and horror movies, it and, looks and, really cool. and also she feels like it's really important to understand to learn so that she understands how weapons work. To, to make them safer. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not, she's not doing it to glorify violence. She's doing it for her own growth. And yeah, it, it is sort of a weird, I do feel like this, there's a, a lot of people now who've been so accustomed to their own safe space. They feel like I got to put my safe space over in your space or everything is so algorithmically coded to make everyone, to give everyone exactly what they like. That if something isn't what someone likes, they fucking can't deal. Yeah. Like, I just don't follow things that I don't agree, that I, people I don't like, or things that I don't like, or... Yeah, and then you get accused of Doesn't that narrow people. your worldview? That's always the problem. The you bubble. Know what I mean? That's what they talk about, yeah. the bubble. It's, oh, you live in a bubble, you don't understand the other things, the other side, the other stuff going on. Well, um, I do, you know, Greg Proops had an amazing, oh my God. I, this quote has been ringing in my head for weeks since Blaine Capach told me about it, but he was... Uh, I don't remember where he was, maybe at the Irvine Improv or something, but it was, you know, 15 years ago, and he was telling some political jokes, and then he started to get some hisses and boos and from the audience, and he goes, hey, 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 
it's okay to laugh at something you don't agree with. It's called sophistication. <laughs> I was like, oh, what a great... And he totally got the crowd back oh, on that. But, funny. Yeah, but it, it's... I think one of the saddest... And I don't want to talk about politics at all. Yeah. But I think one of the saddest things that I've... Well, one of the many sad things that I've seen is that we've come to this place where if someone doesn't ag- agree with you on something, that they're instantly your enemy and fuck them and you want got to destroy them and you can never... It's like... What's wrong with polite discourse or what's wrong with saying like, well, I don't agree with you on this point or I don't support this thing, but you're a person, I'm a person, you know, most people are trying to do their best. Maybe let's, we don't have to agree 100% on every point, but there really is now like a, there is so much of an all or nothing kind of a vibe now. That's gnarly. It's a, it's a fractured world. I mean, I don't agree with 90% of what you guys stand for, but we're still friends. Yeah. Very true. That's a very good point. We've done this podcast for years, for years. sort of. Yeah. We sort deal of, with it. Sort of for years. <laughs> You've done it with for each years. Other? <laughs> <laughs> I really do miss having you guys on. I, 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 I really try to explain to people, just so you know, you are heavily missed on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, and, and, and people really always want to know when more hostfuls and when Matt and Joan. And I'm like, but they're just... They, you, they they have their own lives and they're busy. And I mean, you're looking at it, kids. See, this know? is a Sunday afternoon. That's, yeah. That's, this well, you is know, the that's kind of when had. we started. That's when we would squeeze these in. Yeah. When we first started. You know, we'd, we'd do them at your place. Uh, we do them on weekends. I remember the first one was on a Sunday. I mean. Yeah, it was on Super, Super Bowl, Bowl Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But like with the, with the amount that we've all gotten so busy, it's like it's all kind of has to. There's an algorithm of time, free time. And it's yeah, just, it's so weird. But it's, because, you know, because part of the thing is that I don't, I guess just because of the point of view that I have, I don't read you guys not being able to do the podcast as a negative thing. I view it as, oh my God, they're doing so great. Mm. They don't have time. So they'll come and do it when they have time. So if people get upset about it, I just go like, but you, you like these guys. You want yeah. them to do well. And, you know, they're, they're both legitimately living their dreams at the moment. Yeah, quite literally. We're we doing are. okay. I mean, Joan is living his dream, really. You get you're writing for yeah, but you're a the, network sitcom. You always wanted to be on what you wanted. Mystery Science Theater. What? Yeah, but you you're always wanted to be of Mystery you always Science Theater. Wanted to be a yeah. staff That's writer. Like dream. <laughs> That's a, oh a, yes, I'm living. You my always wanted dream, to be a staff writer on a network sitcom. I'm not writing for Frasier. Yeah, It'd be yeah. like if, if they started to reboot. Here's how it would be: if they started to reboot Frasier and they're like, Matt, come write for this, I'd be like, this is the dream. Whereas Joan is like, we're gonna they're gonna reboot Mystery Science Theater. You be the Joel. Yeah. The now mic, would it be the would it you be <laughs> cast as Frasier or just you being like head no, writer be, of Frasier? Uh, there's no head writer in sitcoms. You have a showrunner. Well, that's yeah. The, yeah. Well, there is there is I like I want to be the showrunner. No, that's I'm a lot Frasier. of responsibility. No, I would have not a Frasier. That is a lot of responsibility. If that Christopher Lloyd character was ever uh, not busy again with his fucking modern family. God, how much money does that guy have? Huh? Oh, the, uh, the modern writer family? Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about uh, what about Mystery Science Theater? How was the whole experience, and how did it? How did you get your brain out of the way to not get too stressed about? Oh my god, I don't want to mess this up. Well, when we were shooting it, when we were writing it, it was like everything was kind of it was it was fun and it was very small. You know, it was just us making each other laugh. When we started shooting it, um, we were going so fast. We had, you know, uh, fourteen episodes to shoot, like host segment wise, in six days five six days and you know the host segments amount to about a half an hour like you know like 22 minutes that's like a half hour of sketches and it's all one shot and it's everything was going by so fast that i didn't have a moment to kind of go whoa look at me in the jumpsuit <laughs> ne- talking to crow right uh that sounds like my friend hampton or talking to you know servo that sounds like my friend baron it was everything was going by so fast and i was i realized i was such a i'm you know I'm the host, but like I'm the I'm like a, a small cog in this like grander machine of the show, where I realize my uh, it's like there would be a time where we do like one thing where it's like I had to like do a, like a sleight of hand magic trick and like a prop and like sing a like part of a song all in this one take, and then I would, there would be times where I'd like I feel I nailed it, and then they would go, oh, we got to do that one again. There was a the camera on the move in to the green screen, the doors opening up messed up. And I go okay. Oh man, I really nailed that one. We'll do it again, <laughs> and then I kind of mess up a few times. But everything else, like the bots go right, or there was you know the the, the prop or anything. Oh is my like, god! So it's like a Rube Goldberg machine. It's just all these things that have to go right for it to to work. So like you know, my performance wasn't the, like the top of the totem pole, and that 
uh, and that was kind of like a thing to kind of get used to as we were doing it because it was just like we were, we were going so fast and, you know, it was – but it, dil- it still feels like it has that nice – and I don't want to say – I'm not saying clunky derogatorily. I'm saying it like – Homespun. The, feels homespun. Yeah, it feels homespun. Yeah. It feels like the old show to like me. Public, like a little public access. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And it felt like old showbiz. You know, like one, like it's like we'd stop and they're like, all right, you got to get into your, uh, you know, German sea captain outfit. And I'd run, and I'd get into a German sea captain outfit. I'd come back. Wait, you guys are finally film. doing dust boot. We're dust, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, then I was like, all right, now you got to be, you know, the guy, the, the vil- you got to dress up like the villain from this other movie we're doing. So I'd run and, and then like, you know, like there's these props and there's, you know, magic and and songs and it felt like old showbiz kind of Jonah's stuff. Like, description of magic is just pulling handkerchiefs that keep going. Uh, that's that, well, that's my physicality. <laughs> like, you know, slide a hand, yeah. pull stuff from behind, you know, crow's head or something like that. And, you know, did anything was, did it, it didn't ruin anything for you. Did it like, like being sometimes when Same you see something made. and then, but then when you're involved in the process and you're like, Oh man, this like took some of the magic out or did it make it better? No, it made me, I already had so much respect for the people who made the show, all of them, um, so much already. But it made me just totally realize how good they all were because of how hard it is to make the show. Mm. The amount of jokes that have to be written, the timing of the of the riffs, um, the the physicality of the you know, and I almost I'm on a platform between two trenches for the bots. And so, like, you know, it's in Joel saying, like, kind of he had a similar situation where it's like, you know, you, you're going like, oh, we got movie sign. And, you know, I got to jump up and, uh, and like, you know, juke around and then, like, run off the side. But that's like I'm on a platform that can kind of get wobbly. And then I also have to jump over a um, like a gap, an open trench, like a, like a three foot gap and act like I'm just walking forward. So, like, I can't like be like looking down to make sure I'm doing it. Right. It was just it was. It made me go. Oh, they were they were so great. They yeah. were so great, and I just hope I, you know, did okay. Well, a really cool part was having all the Kickstarter backers. There was like, like one day there was forty Kickstarter backers on set visiting. Oh, oh so, wow! Yeah, and it was kind of rad because you can kind of see them watching. You could see them smiling and getting to meet them all. I thought it was gonna be like I thought it was gonna be too much. I thought I had too much to do, um, to like. Like, and, you know, the guy who ran, Ivan, the guy who ran the Kickstarter was like, he said, hey, you know, like, can you come and talk to the, K- the Kickstarter backers? I'm like, I have to learn my lines. I have to get these things done. But meeting people and all the people that were, it felt like we we're all like, it was a bunch of people like, hey, we're all part of this thing. We're bringing back the thing yeah. we like. And it actually kind of almost gave me like an, like an audience. Like I would revitalize my, my, you know, uh, myself by just going and talking with them yeah. and laughing with them and having fun. So it was crazy. The whole thing was really nuts. And it happened so fast. And it was just crazy long 12, 13 hour days. Oh, my um, God. You know, like on my feet. Like my, my legs started getting, my thighs started getting sore. And I was wondering why. It was because of the amount of times a day that I was doing We Got Movie Sign. Or it's just like, <laughs> like, you know, jumping and stuff like that. Mr. So. Science Theater cardio workout. Yeah, yeah. But it was it's a very specific injury. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it was, you know, they feel good. When I was in, when Joel and I uh, taped the Turkey Day Marathon stuff, uh, we watched an episode together, and it feels feels like the show. You know, it's uh, I, I it's weird. I'm also realizing because it's going to be on Netflix, mm-hmm. but it's going to be on Netflix all over in every English speaking country. So Australia, New Zealand, all this stuff uh, will get it as well. South Africa. And um, the weird part is it's like, it's like, oh, more people who have never heard of it will see it than the people that have. Right. Which is a, like a weird feeling. So it has to like – it can't rest on the laurels of, of nostalgia. It has to kind of be its own cool thing. Right. On top of, uh, you know, uh, of it being this very beloved. Well, that's why, that's why so many reboots fail because they just think, oh, the nostalgia will hold this up. It's like no, that kind of just has to be a layer. Yeah, that just kind of has to be the glue or whatever, just the foundation. But then, just make it a good thing on its own. And then, if you get the nostalgia, well, that's just a nice. That's just bonus. That's just a nice bonus. Yeah. you know, we 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 have stuff here and there. You know, you'll you'll hear uh, each episode. You'll hear a couple old classic. You know, you'll hear "Watch Out for Snakes" or something like that. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, but it 
It was really it's a, it's insane. It's insane that uh, tomorrow actually I got to go in and do ADR. Um, automated dialogue replacement. Yes, yeah, so I got to go and uh, redo some lines for the riffs uh, and the and the whole segments. Sorry, you're so bad at those the first time. Uh, everyone else did too. <laughs> I, that's not what I heard. Yeah, it's also sometimes it's like you no, know no, sometimes like no. the little gyro thing. Yeah, sure. The little, yeah, <laughs> thing. The, the little gyro thing, like for like crow's mouth, was really loud. So sometimes if we were talking at the same time, you just hear wee 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 wee. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff they don't tell you when but you're just a, a fan. But it's a fucking robot. Yeah. It would make that sound. That's yeah. what I'd say yeah. to Joel. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. I really was. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I I texted Jonah right after they finished, and I was like, hey, my feelings were really hurt for some reason, because I saw everyone doing it, like all these fr- cameos for friends, and I texted Jonah. I was like, hey, I'm a fan of the show, too. I wanted to be in it. And he was like, I'm sorry. It's not, I didn't 100% control that. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, and I didn't want to tell you that's like, it's like, I brought you up a couple times and then it didn't like happen. Like, it's like, you know, I, there yeah, was they don't like times. me. I get it. No, no, but it was just, you know, it's, it's just this, it's so much other stuff. It, it, it did feel kind of weird. I felt I, bad too, but I didn't bother him with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I it was, think. it was, you know, it was odd coming from like, you know, Hin America and Meltdown where I'm kind of in charge. Yeah, or, you know, of these things, and I came onto the thing, and I'm, you know, I was just a writer and performer on it. And Joel would sometimes ask, "Like, hey, man, what do you think about this?" I'd well, be the like, interesting well, thing here's is, what I, I would give me more control. The interesting thing is that you, people are going to assume it's your show, yeah, and so you're going to get a lot of the when it airs, the praise. You'll get a lot of the, <laughs> you'll the, get a lot of praise. the everything. You'll the get a lot of everything. Will come in. Probably bags of money. Yeah, these are all the things <laughs> millions that people are of dollars. Send you. Yeah. But but I, I, I'm sorry. I feel bad that I said anything. It just my feelings were just hurt for like a minute. And no, I but you probably, were right. You were right. Like I when shouldn't you have said... texted you. But but I just it it was just sort of the you know I'm as big a fan of show that show as you are. So yeah. It, no, it was it was kind of like the thing where when you texted me, I was just like I was like I know exactly. It's like I couldn't have been more empathetic to that like that moment and it was you know it, it was just two friends being honest with each other you know That's, yeah yeah so i there was i didn't feel bad that you brought it up to me but I, it's like because like you said you're just like you know you would probably feel the same i was like yeah i fucking definitely would oh you mean if i had done it and i didn't ask you to be yeah, 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 yeah it's like yeah. hey hey man but but also but also you know it's not lost on me it's like you know things are going pretty well like i shouldn't but it's still funny that there can be things that you still have these human moments where your feelings can still get hurt about silly things, where it's like, hey, you know, maybe you don't have to be in everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's yeah. totally fine. You, but it, it just, it was seeing pictures post, like, because I follow, you know, all the people who are involved. Yeah. And just seeing all the pictures posted, I'm like, oh man, that looks like so much fun. It looked yeah. like so much fun. Well, it's funny you too. You gotta get over that like, FOMO, Chris. The, fo- the, the FOMO. Fear of fear missing, missing out. out. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, what's, Funny about that though is uh, hashtag no FOMO. It's because of the way the show is shot. It's like you know we there was like friends of ours there that I never saw. You know, oh, I never, right. I, like it's like I wasn't there when Patton and Felicia were shooting, except for like half of a day. Right. And uh, and some other people we know. Uh, you know, I made sure to be there when Mark Hamill was there for sure. But uh, <laughs> and uh, and but it was like it, there was this funny thing with Mark Hamill where. He, he was like, Joel, how'd you find, how'd you find Joni? He's like, oh, you know, I just like met him through the Nerdist podcast. And, uh, and he was, uh, we got along and this and that. And like, uh, he's like, oh, is he like a, and I, it's like, I was sitting right there, but Mark Hamill was talking about me like I wasn't. And he was just like, oh, did you, does he do like UCB stuff? He's like, oh yeah, kind of, you know, he did back a while back. He's like, yeah. And then, he, and then Mark Hamill just started naming a bunch of my friends that he really likes. He was like, "Oh, James Adomian, James Adomian." He's a right, huge right, comedy right. fan. Yeah, and then like, but like, the more people he named, the more I was just like, "What do you mean you don't know who I?" Am? <laughs> 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 you literally named every yeah. other. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, but um, and hey, does he know Matt Myra? Boy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Dave Matthews band. Yeah, how are Matt and Dory doing? Yeah, are they yeah. having what a the child? Fuck, what the fuck is happening? What's going on, Luke? Hey, I heard uh, Kyle Clark is writing on yeah. some CISO show. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Clark Mary? was great, by the way. Oh, I'm so glad. We, we, uh, we have him over on At Midnight yes, now. Very, I was very pleased with uh, Kyle Clark, uh, his work on uh, Hit America Season 2. He was, he was fantastic. He's got like at least one bit per episode uh, in there. Yeah, he has a strange encyclopedic brain. Oh. Yeah, sometimes it was... Uh, 
it, it was it was a bit to do. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> well, that one really is like I don't, I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't care, Kyle. And then he also like he's 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 such he's so he's so funny, but he's also like. And we've all we know him so well. It's like it's like when he gets stuck on something where he's like, I had to, I have to get this in. Or like where he says he has to say stuff or he has to do. I was yeah. like, No, you don't. No, you don't. You could have just said. You could, we were all happy with the bit. You don't have to. <laughs> you just gotta. It's but it, that's what makes him great. Yes, exactly. What is he? Yeah, he's 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 doing a. He came in through the research department on on at midnight now. So yeah. he's he's uh, he's working there. He's great. Working there every day. He's great. Yeah, he um, is great. How's it going over there? Good. Oh my god, it's been amazing. I mean, we, you know, since we moved to eleven thirty, which may or may not be permanent. No one, no one, seen, no one knows. But it, but we we've, we've had an amazing time. It what it did force us to do was try to rise to the challenge and be more topical and try to be a a better companion to the Daily Show than the type of show we were. Because really, the first couple seasons of the show was just. Kind of like, oh, these are silly web clips. And we still do stuff like that, but now the show's – the only thing that sort of bums me out about it is that when people talk about late night, we never get mentioned because they're like, oh, you're, you're a game show. And we're like, it's not, it's not a real game show. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the Daily Show is no, a fake – Writers Guild. It, it, <laughs> the Daily Show is like a fake news sh- – like they use the, that type of news show to deliver pop culture and politics. And yeah. We use a game show – to shell to deliver like it's a comedy show the game yeah, show part's not real it's no different from like any other show that has panel it's just that you know there's no there's a there's just a structure structural to, difference, that, that moves yeah. it and so you know it's that's that's the only sort of weird thing about our show is that and, and the reason it's important is because you know when a network goes to pick up a show they like to see well you're a part of the conversation you're a part of the late night conversation and we keep getting left out of it because people are like, oh, you're n- it's a game show. We're like, but it's not. It's not a game show. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a comedy show. It's it's pop culture. Like it's yeah. it's more. And, and I feel like we're innovating as much as possible. We work really hard on that show to try to innovate the games and yeah. innovate the stuff and fuck with the structure. And your new show. When's your new show come out? The Wall comes out. There. It. Uh, I don't know when this is going to go up, but it'll December. I think December nineteenth. There's a preview episode after the America's Got Talent holiday special, and then there might be another preview special January second. But January third at eight p.m. on Tuesdays is will be the regular time slot. Crazy. How many episodes? Uh, just ten. Hmm. And I and I and they'll know quickly yeah, yeah. if people give a crap or not. I hope they do. But it is a very straightforward game show. Like it yeah. is a and and fun. You know. Someone said to me, and they saw the, the preview for it, and they go, well, this doesn't seem like you at all. And I was like, well, that's part of the reason why I wanted to try something different, because yeah. that makes it interesting. But, you know, it takes five hours to shoot an episode, so you have this huge Jeez. chunk of time. And I really actually, there's only one team per show and uh, of two people. And I really got attached to those people, because you get to know them, and you care about them, and they're all... Because yeah. in between setups, you're just... Probably just talking to them. You're just talking and, and, you know, and everyone was chosen for the show. It wasn't just like a random – it wasn't a typical game show contestant thing. They went after people – and a lot of this was LeBron James's influence. But they went after people who were, you know, pillars of their community or really good people who had something taken away or – like they're all good people. Yeah, yeah. So – you really so when they lose it really hurts. it really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in in a five hour episode, a lot of things happen. Jokes happen, not jokes happen. You know, and so I don't I don't really know how the episodes were edited. I haven't seen all the episodes. Shit. So I don't. You know, it could just be very. But even so, you know, it it was really fun and 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 it was more emotional than I expected it to be. And I'm I'm so glad I did it. And. Uh, even if it goes away immediately, what a great, fun, different thing to try. Yeah. And I always wanted to do a big, a real flashy game show. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. To, just to do it. That's awesome. So it was, it was fun. Yeah. That's The Wall on NBC. <laughs> NBC. NBC. So, was Tom Brokaw NBC? Yes. Tom Brokaw, yeah. NBC Nightly News. <laughs> Jonah Ray Jonah on his podcast. Was by a bear today. Remember that sketch? 
What? Dana Carvey plays Tom Brokaw, who wants to go on vacation, so he has to record every possible news story. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one of them is Gerald Ford was mauled by a bear today. <laughs> and he goes, come on, that's not going to happen. You're the one who wants to go on vacation for two months. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really a hoot. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Great sketch. That is Great a good sketch. sketch. I oh, by the way, speaking of SNL, ah, Chappelle's opening monologue was just God damn it, that guy is amazing. He's so good. I'm surprised he didn't light a cigarette during his set. I mean it's obviously an understatement. He was under- smoking at the goodbyes. Oh, he was? Yeah. It's yeah, obviously yeah. an understatement to say Dave Chappelle is an amazing comedian, but he really is like He's great. He's 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 the best. He's, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna best. get three specials on that Netflix. guy can spin comedy. It just he's fucking ma- It's a he's masterful. Yeah, it's he, almost disheartening where you're like, well, I'm never gonna be that good. So but effortless. I'm so glad someone exists who is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so crazy. He's gonna do three specials on Netflix. Well, the, and they'll be great. They'll all be great because he just doesn't care about. And they'll be on Netflix, so if he runs the he light, it's not going to be a problem. He doesn't give a shit about yeah. all the stuff that can hang people up. He doesn't care about fame. Yeah. He doesn't care about money. He doesn't care about how he's per- – like, he doesn't – he just is a pure comedy lover. Like, he just loves the craft of stand-up. And, yeah. and I really hope I get to see – I hope I get to see him multiple times getting ready for those specials. Oh, man, I bet. Every time you see him, it's like a fucking education and, oh, that's how you're spelled. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. how you – and then <laughs> if, if you get a chance, if any – if he's doing multiple shows in a row, getting ready for a special, you should go see him multiple days in a row because he's so um, – just watching him hone bits. He'll, like the first day, they'll sort of be these globby masses, but they're still really funny, but they're very conversational. And then the next day, he's like filtered out some of the fat, and then they get tighter. And then by like the third or fourth day, it's like, well, that is a fucking solid seven-minute bit you just right just described there. his physique as well. Yeah, that's very exactly – yeah, he's – Tone for yeah. a smoker. Yeah. Are you doing stand-up at all? No. You're going to d- quit it? I don't have any. Oh, I don't know. I'm taking a break, maybe. Uh, the meltdown was like the last kind of connection I had to doing it regularly. But I just, uh, I'm so inundated with all this other stuff that I, like I haven't thought about stand-up bits. I don't think about stand-up bits. As sad as I was, because obviously that was another seminal thing that happened this year, the yeah. meltdown show at, not just on Comedy Central, but the meltdown show at Meltdown Comics at the yeah. Nerdist showroom. Uh, had its last show a, a couple months, month ago, month and a half ago. And I, as sad as I was to know that that show didn't exist anymore, I was really happy and proud for you because I know it's not an easy thing to do to let something like that go. But I think it was really responsible. And I think it was really cool because it it's just sort of a way to chart growth. It's like, you know, we did yeah. this thing and we we did it until... You know, we it, it had its lifespan, and yeah. that was it. And it's always going to be that special moment in time. Yeah, and that's what we wanted to do. That was a, a big reason we, you know, I haven't I haven't been around on a Wednesday in you know three four weeks. Uh, Kumel hasn't been able to. It's like with this, and this would have been the case till March April, and everyone's like, oh, you could take a break. It's like, well, no, it's like we never did before. It's you know the idea of it starting to fall into being a shadow version of what it was at its you know best the you know we didn't want it to be anything less than the best version of the show so sometimes things really or most things are just sort of a like a a chemistry of time yeah like everything worked you know and then you don't want it yeah you don't want the quality to suffer you don't want it to not be what it was to everyone if you're not you know like if you have other passions it's good to evolve and it's good to graduate and it's good to it's good to move on yeah i you know i I love it and also you know it's uh my my interest in stand-up like i'm still a fan of it but like i wasn't feeling the need to like make new bits and be on stage i loved being on the stage of that show because i was with a a friend and an audience that was you know great but it's you know the more I the more I think about it the more I just I just I, I go I, don't know, I, I I get so much more fulfillment out of all the other things I do and it's fun to it really is fun to move on too but yeah. I, 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 uh, a therapist said something to me once which I thought was really great it's kind of hard is this Bruce Wayne's mom it's not it's not Bruce Wayne's mom okay I'm just I was just wondering but she <laughs> was she was Bruce Wayne's mom uh, Martha not Martha not Martha Wayne oh. <coughs> what's that name <laughs> <laughs> um, but. The, uh, the, the, the quote was, um, 
uh, it's about the having and not the keeping. So you you don't just a, a, an experience can still be special, and you can still appreciate that you had it. It doesn't mean you have to keep it forever. Yeah, and that kind of makes it more special because it's you know it, it's it's finite. Yeah, and it's you know it's sort of self contained and it's its own thing, and that can be you know that period of time that was that perfect period of time. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you know the not that it's not, I don't I can't say to the quality of the show now but the fact that we were talking about simpsons episodes that are 20 years old and we haven't really seen many uh, outside of those you know after those seasons it's kind of like it's still around but like is it doesn't mean as much to us anymore well the new ones i think uh, those old ones do no they do but but like but the new episodes like just like if you think about the the full spectrum mm. of you know, and yeah. I'm not saying that it's like bad or it's like you know some things can go on for a long time. But uh, it really is. I think it really is important to to try new things, like the wall or another yeah. an, or, or sidekick with Matt Myra or sidekick with Matt Myra or 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 another you know or, or season 27 of The Simpsons. You know, yeah, yeah, Cause, because it it requires so much energy to to experience new things when you you know you're, you're sort of like. Um, your brain just sort of gets filled up and then at a certain point you just go no more new stuff i don't got time i've got energy and i think that's when you sort of begin to die creatively or spiritually or whatever because you're not experiencing new things and experiencing new things is growth but growth takes energy so just gotta you gotta find the energy to try new weird things and experience fun weird things yeah no definitely i agree what are you gonna do uh what are you gonna do in 2017 what's your what's your big uh as of right now we're shooting uh hidden america season two until march and then we'll probably start writing or uh, editing we're, we're editing right after that because it premieres in june um i'm you know we'll wait to see what happens with uh, another season of mr science Theater. i'm sure there'll be another season seems of like science there would Theater. be I, I can't imagine a situation where there's not uh, well if there isn't kickstart it yeah <laughs> but it's you know that it feels like production schedule wise that would probably start up right when i'm like uh still editing in america so i don't know we'll see we'll see how uh i haven't i you know it's been a great year and a year of like uh, three shows i have but i haven't had any time off to kind of just go on a trip with deanna and i'm i'm kind of starting to really feel that Mm -hmm. you know that's that that kind of thing where it's just like we squeeze in like a movie when we can and it's just but i'm always tired or always thinking yeah it's really tough it's tough because I want to, you know, I want to have like these, I want to have new experiences together that have nothing to do with work. That's it's so interesting that you, yeah, I completely understand what you're saying because this past year or just being with Lydia is really the first time. And I mean, in, since I don't, I mean, I, since I don't know when, where I really thought where I'm really excited about breaks because I go, oh, we can, you know, we'll go somewhere. I yeah, we're, gonna, hate we're gonna go away. I used to hate them too because I'm like, no, you're you, losing I'm saying you used you're to losing momentum. Oh yeah, yeah. me, I hated them you too, just them. like me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hated losing momentum. I always felt like that, and now I feel like no, 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 it's so important. And and just to have a partner to want to experience things with, and like, let's travel here, and we're already planning next Christmas where we're, where yeah. we're going to go. Yeah. Cause then if you do it, you just got to do it. You just have to do it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm looking for, we really want to go. We want to go to Japan really bad. I and mean, the, the thing is if you take a year off, you probably would have to do some work to get momentum back. Yeah. But if you take a week or two off, the, the, you're fine. Yeah. No one's going to even know you were gone. <laughs> you're, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's totally... a, but, uh, one of my plans when I'm done shooting in America is to get LASIK. You're gonna do it. I got I got approved. Uh, I got approved for the 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 process. CISO said okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the worst part when I said like I like I I tweeted something about uh, LASIK and so many people were like, but what about your look or your? Some people said brand or your identity, and I was just like, if uh, you know, You're like bro, what? that's what that's what <laughs> prescriptionless lenses are for, yeah, bro. Yeah. But what more reason to do it than yeah. To you know, to yeah. forego any idea that what I wear. Can I just is who make I a recommendation? Am. Sure. Just a little. Just just think about it. Don't say no right away. Get tattoo of glasses frames on your. That over was your the, eyes. actually the plan. Yeah, yeah. I was going to do like a I've leopard prince cat eye. Really? Yeah. Of course. Of course. Who I've does? Seen of course, I've that's seen that. Thing. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do it. Horn rim. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, so that that's I'm looking forward to doing that. That'll that be exciting. Great. Yeah. I would love to be able to not wear glasses. I, I do, I'm, I'm not enjoying contacts. Yeah. At all. Yeah, no. I, What's keeping I tried you from them it? and I couldn't do it. Well, I don't know. First of all, I don't know if I have the kind of... Maybe I do. My eyes are pretty bad and I have astigmatism. I, I'm farsighted. Okay. So I... Uh, so really, I just need them for reading and general eye strain. Yeah. And so I can't just wear glasses around the world unless they were bifocals. Yeah. Uh, even though there are transitional lenses, I just so I just wear contacts and I don't enjoy them. But the LASIK process and what April went through was so horrifying. Yeah, I know, I know. You did, you did it. Katie did it. I know you say it's fine, but, but then, then April April, April had a thing where they it didn't heal properly, and, and so she had this weird thing. And there were like three days of her life where she was like, "I just ruined my vision forever," and she was inconsolable yeah but now she they fly, but they had glad. to go in and scrape it off and it had to reheal and all that i was like oh yeah i don't want to do any of that yeah no i i'm i'm looking forward to the idea of it just mainly you know talk of the like massive earthquake and and you know stuff like that i kind of go well what if i what if i lost my glasses are you thinking about the twilight zone episode i would have started? time to read all, all the, the books. books you finally have them to yourself. By the way, why couldn't that guy just scramble his way to a drugstore and find another pair of glasses? I guess it was the 60s, so maybe it was yeah, harder to find glasses. I mean, those were pretty thick glasses. Where's he going to find They were, them? but you know, there's... Two pairs? Yeah, he should have there had There had to be glasses everywhere. If people just got fried, you know, from the nuclear attack or whatever Gross, it was. Chris. What? Ghost glasses. <laughs> just floating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, that's exciting that you're going to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I was going to try and do it before we start shooting, but then I realized there's certain things I'm doing in the season that would... It's not wise to, you know, because uh, there's a bit, hopefully, we're going to find, if I can do it, uh, skydiving. Um in the the Miami episode, we already shot Miami, but we'll shoot somewhere else for it. But uh, and then uh, I went jet skiing, and I accidentally did like fall off the jet ski. Uh, I like wiped out. I didn't know you could like tip those things so so easily. <laughs> the whole idea, <laughs> not the, that easy. Well, it's like the bit. The whole bit was like uh, it's like uh, I, I get a, on a jet ski and I, I soup it up with like GoPros, and I, uh, the whole thing is I want to know what it's like to experience. The plight of a Cuban uh, refugee floating in the ocean. Jesus so Christ. I go on a Nisizawa X5000 wave breaker uh, to see what it's really like. But then I, I, I go, before I realize the, f- the full extent of the struggle that these immigrants go through, let's see what this baby can do. And then it's just like a montage of me like jet skiing around. And when I was doing, I was doing these circles and then like tried to like do this other move and it just dipped down and I flew off like over the handlebars. Wow. Uh, and it was very frightening. And you died. I died. I'm a ghost now. Ghost You're a ghost. Jonah. You're going to need ghost LASIK. Yeah, yeah. Ghost glasses. Matt, what were you... I feel like if we're... Probably, I don't know if we're going to be able to get together again before the end of the year. So it is right now almost December. So this could be the end of the year hostful podcast. Uh, Unless you guys want to get together again and do an end of year hostful. do host- another Sunday. Uh, That's not the... Yeah, fourth, I mean, it, after this next leg, I'm around. Now. But just in case. 11th is my Latka Cookie Fest. I hope to see you there. Uh, the following weekend. The following weekend. The we'll, 18th. We'll be on our own. Uh, We're not going to be around. Oh, this, uh, that's on the 11th? Yeah. I can go. Great. I'm back. Oh, going wait. to the next leg is Minneapolis and Cleveland. I'm pretty sure I can go to that. Good. You should. Before work. Yeah. I can come in before work. Yes, you have uh, Dead to Talk. Did you have... Matt, you must have made something incredibly impressive for thanksgiving i did not what this year we ordered you did yes yeah it was uh, I mean, with all the ibf you weren't against all you didn't like, want every fiber in my in the... being uh dory was like uh ah, let's just order and i was like okay so we just got you know we ordered for some turkey and you know we had a, you know a traditional dinner we ordered and we had it there because Dory was on bed rest because of the got it, uh, got it, got it. we the day before we had done the I mean kind of turkey bastery of the throwing in of the embryo mm-hmm. uh, we got a picture of the embryo it's the baby it's the first first picture of the baby selfie did you do a selfie uh, you know I was gonna but then I, I was like maybe it's in poor taste when <laughs> my wife front poops this thing out yeah. Uh, Either prematurely or nah, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say if it'll take. There's like a thirty percent chance. You don't take. know. Oh, it's only thirty yeah. percent chance for but this that, particular embryo. 
Got it, got it, got it. So we'll, I mean, it's interesting. We'll How see. is she holding up? Her breasts are tender. Uh, so that's like a hint that maybe she could be pregnant. But I mean, how is she holding up through the process? I'm just talking about her breasts. I know you are, uh, man. That's I all know. I care about. Right, fellas? Yeah. Uh, I what? I no. don't, I'm not comfortable. She's doing all right. <laughs> she's got Bo, you know, she's, her and the dog really are hanging together on the couch. We're having a lazy for, I haven't been home on a weekday in a long, long time. Your wife time. is an incredible woman. She really is. She's, I mean, uh, she is. Her inc- book comes out april 25th pre-order it on amazon what's it called it's called startup a novel by dory shafrir and uh she just had a little brown has this like luncheon where they have the spring the authors are excited about so they pick three authors and she was one of the three authors and she got to go to this uh luncheon in new york and they sat her next to the new york times book review person and she was nervous about that, but she probably crushed it. She's doing great. She's, it's great. We're really excited about the book. Uh, it's very funny. Uh, April 25th, that comes out. And then she's going on a book tour in April. So she'll be in L.A., Seattle, San Francisco, New York. We're going to try to squeeze into Boston, uh, hopefully at Booksmith in Brookline. That's where I'd like her to do it. <laughs> and then I'm going to, because I'll be on hiatus from Goldberg's for April, so. Hopefully, I get to go on the book tour with her. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good. Be good. Should be good if I'm not still shooting Sidekick with Matt Myra. Who knows, guys? Who no. knows? Yeah. Great know. episodes coming up. Check it out. Project Alpha something dot net. <laughs> sell it. Sell it. Don't know where to find it. Don't Google Project Don't Alpha. You'll get something entirely but different. No, I love you. Our SEO is not great. That's all I'm saying. That may be. Here's the CEO. I need to know. <laughs> But I don't know well, that's what I said. Our CEO is not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't feel good about that. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited a bit about. I don't know. I'm just excited about. I know this year was uh, was sort of dubbed the uh, the year of no chill by a nurse podcast listener, uh, and it really was kind of the year of no chill. You know, terrible in, year in, in the world, but outside of us. Well. I mean, the thing is, nothing is all good or all bad. Yeah. So I, I, I just don't want, you know, when you, when you read the news or you see things that are going on in the world and you're like, oh, that's it, it's the apocalypse. Every generation feels like that. Mm-hmm. And just, na- I feel like now more than ever, don't, get, don't give up hope and, uh, you know, be there for your community, be there for people you care about, be thankful for the things that you do have and, and, and support <laughs> The people that you love, and that's the that's the best. You know, it's not all bad out there, guys. Take it from three white cis males. <laughs> hey, man, three white cis beta cuck males. Yeah, beta cuck. <laughs> Fist bump. We're really far away from each other. Yeah, and couch. you know, you don't obviously also. <laughs> We're you on a have... big leather couch in a mansion. <laughs> 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 yeah, you don't have to Arguably, listen to me. You don't doing. have to listen to me. I mean, <laughs> you know, if, if, if that if that uh, if that renders my if that renders my advice or opinion inert i completely accept that and i understand i just i was just thinking more about you know i feel like uh i feel like i was able to harvest good relationships this year with yeah. people and and i was never really super social before and i don't know it's just been it's well, that, sometimes it takes a, a sometimes it takes the love of a good of woman the love of a good woman to bring it all around <laughs> But uh, I hope we get to do more of these, and I and I assume that we'll just do them whenever we can all make make them work on the calendar together. Yeah. Whenever we can make them rain, guys, it's gonna be great. So it's not gonna it's not gonna end. It's not gonna end, right? No. I, that's really up to all of us. I don't know, Katie. <laughs> you you still, Katie, shaking it off. You sick of this shit? You're saying no? You're saying no? You sick of our bullshit? You sick of the podcast? You want to end the podcast? Guys, podcast is over. Katie shrugged. (laughs) She's been the puppet master this entire time. Uh, But you're traveling a lot until March. Yeah. But you'll be back around. Yeah, there's like, there's, you know, we we go out for two cities and then we come back and then we shoot in town. So if we're doing like, you know, a weekend or an evening, I like, I'm always, I'm always down. Yeah. Yeah. uh, For that. Um, I have the worst schedule in the world. Like as far as like out, I have no like Mondays I shoot Sidekick at night, so I leave Culver City and drive to Burbank at six thirty p.m., mm-hmm. which is uh, dope. 
the worst commute on the planet, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm there till like 11:30, and then the rest of the week at Goldberg's, we don't know if we're getting out at seven or midnight. Yeah, it's hard to say. That's riding. That's fun though. Yeah. It's good times and great oldies. Do you have any? Uh, Want to leak some storylines? No, don't do that. Uh, no, I could, <laughs> I could probably tease some things that we've shot. Uh, we've got. Uh, let's see, the kit episode already aired. We've got. I mean, we've got some great stuff with uh, Barry. We got some fun developments with Barry. He's fun. You know, the real Barry Goldberg uh, is a doctor in real life, and the TV Barry Goldberg is a, is a real dum dum. So we're gonna finally figure out a way to make him. Still be a dum dum, but be really good at science. So right, right, be, right, right, right. That'll be a fun. That'll cool. be a fun episode. I think we're doing. We're gonna working on a Karate Kid script right now. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Sweep the leg, man. Yeah. Sweep the leg. 2017, 2017. Almost here. I can't believe this year's over. Fucking fuck. It's really crazy. It's really crazy. I just can't wrap my mind around. You know, my dad would always say it, and then I would always be like, "Incredible, man." Now I'd be like, <laughs> "He's right. It's moving so fast." <laughs> So grab it while you can, embrace it while you can, enjoy yeah. it while you can, enjoy your burrito. Enjoy your burrito. This is the thing we say on the show. Get yeah. them while you can. Get it while you can. And uh, yeah, I'll be talking to Dennis a few more weeks, unless this posts after that, in which case, what a great few weeks those were. Man, that was great. And then uh, the, Boy, wall, the, way the wall coming ended, up huh? at midnight, 1130. It is a late night show, everyone. <laughs> It is. It's on. The time's a giveaway. It's on at 11.30 when other late night shows are on. I, mean, I feel like a lot of late night shows share that time slot. <laughs> we did an ama- our, our, our election night special. I'm so proud of. The show was live. Oh, I can't believe you guys did And that. we had uh, Paul F. and Whitney Cummings and Ron Funches. And we had a... Uh, we had the, and and Blaine Capatch wrote this amazing crawl that was oh, this news goodness. crawl that was going on at the bottom, and then you know we incorporated stuff as it was happening. It was one of the, I was so proud of that show. That's great. And the team, the whole staff, and Joe Randazzo, and like everyone is just everyone's just firing on all cylinders. So I hope people give the show continue Except to Nick give Weiger. the show. I mean, come on, the bud. Except yeah. Nick Weiger. No, <laughs> Nick Weiger. He's always firing best. all cylinders. That's what's the joke. Yes, but yeah. people don't know that if they don't know. Oh, yeah. So you listen to Doughboys. You get it. Nick's yeah, great. Yeah, Nick's Nick's a fucking genius. He has one of the best funnier die videos. Yeah. Ever Gungo comes style. up in every Gungo writer's style. room I've ever in. It's the best. Uh, and uh, yeah, so at midnight in the wall, and then uh, and I might go. Uh, you know, if, uh, I might go do some more uh, live with Kelly episodes, which hey. was really fun. Took My dad enjoyed it. Which she's awesome. Would you, you said you did here's great. the here's the scenario. ABC says, "Chris, well, here's a pile. It's a pile of money, <laughs> and uh, we really we love the way you and Kelly look uh, so Aryan together. Uh, this new <laughs> sure this that would new, be uh, how that would be presented. The way he's uh, Italian. Wait, hang on. I am. I'm happy. I Italian. know, but you got blue eyes and a light color hair. I don't appreciate your tone. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, uh, we've, uh, you we've... told me to bring you these pies. <laughs> <laughs> he can do it. He's a offend dad. everyone. <laughs> you uh, told me to bring you these pies. We're backing up the Brinks truck. We'd love you to come out. Uh, please uh, come, come do live with Kelly uh, forever. And uh, you go to you go over to uh, Comedy Central, and you're like, guys, uh, listen, could we shoot in New York? And then Comedy Central's like, well, we have some stages there. Would you do it? Oh, I don't know. I haven't. I don't. I mean, I. I, 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 I can't rule it out, but I can't rule it in. Ah. Like you're getting. You're getting so far ahead of where I'm. Where I I'm at right know. Now. So I, I. just don't have an answer for that. Chris All is I, gonna put like the final piece on in this house, and then he's gonna get a phone <laughs> call. And you're like, finally, the house says, "Hold on, my phone's ringing." <laughs> Boy, sure can't wait to spend forever. Well, Alex Murray, what could this be about? Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> this is the best worst news ever. <laughs> No, I don't know. I mean, all, all I know is I had an amazing time doing the show. I have so much respect for – she is amazing. She's so conversational. Like, even like even just – look, she's been doing that show for a long time. She doesn't have to oh, – oh, chair. Good thing I just uh, said that. The 900-year-old chair. She doesn't – you know, she could just do it like it's a job, go in, not talk to anyone. When you're on the commercial breaks, she's so sweet and warm and conversational. She fucking goes, go, does does warm up with the crowd, like, oh, grabs a mic, goes and talks to people, answers questions, like makes jokes, gets you involved. Like that woman is incredible. So I, mean, I really, just, we just want to know how's Gelman. I just, great. Everyone's great. That production is 
you, when you're there, you're like, oh, this is why this is the number one. Like you, you completely yeah, yeah. understand well, why it's a it machine is that's where been it is together where it for is. decades. But it's it's a really lovely vibe, and uh, I don't know. I had fun doing it, and I, I think I'll probably get to do some more, and and I'm I'm looking forward to that. And I feel it, like you're it's a natural. All, it's all fun. Well, I don't know. I just I don't know. It's there are elements to it that are very podcasty mm-hmm. because it's just conversation. You're just you're literally you're just, just conversational. Up conversation, it's yeah. not you're not really following you know they don't really follow a script it's not there wasn't anything to beforehand you gotta you know it was like showed up at eight did the show from nine to ten chatted with her for a while after the show some of the fun that you could also have on sidekick with matt myra (laughs) that's exactly i'd like to do an episode where joan is the host and you're the guest (laughs) that'd be fun fun. that would be fun yeah put me in my place yeah you know me <laughs> you know me. <laughs> oh, I've missed you guys so much. The way he said it. I love you both. What a fucking idiot. Enjoy your burrito, everyone. Enjoy. Your burrito. Enjoy it. Now leaving nerdist.com. Enjoy your burrito. than me <laughs> i'll handle this uh yeah it was interesting but yeah so two kids i think is gonna be i think that's a good number of children first edition have. of the myra method yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my hands are fat that's me that the second edition uh, uh you recently you recently a year of marriage yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and okay. also recently another year of <clears throat> aged yep another year aged i just yeah. i just had my birthday now i've been married for three months now Three beautiful months. Three months. How's it feel? Oh, uh, well, it's great. I mean, it's it's great. It's the same but different. Uh, yeah, hey, it's great. I was asking him. All right, I'm just saying. We in general, all know. It's how you I mean, like we were already living married. together before, yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it it feels the same. But there's this sort of level of like, hey, we got each other's backs. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. in terms of we're we're not gonna like it. It it's meaningful. Yep. In the sense that, and I'm not saying that just being in a just having a boyfriend girlfriend or whatever type of a, that type of significant other relationship isn't significant it, it just there's just something it just feels like a layer a couple layers deeper and it's kind of nice you look over like oh hey that's my wife hey come on now i'm a husband you know yeah. and oh, yeah. uh japan was amazing what an incredible place to take a honeymoon holy shit look like it i recommend like you it. Had a lot of fish do we do we do we a podcast so after you no. got back from no we there? haven't done one since no. before the wedding yeah what yeah or we just talked about it yeah, I don't know. We didn't really. I don't think we've. Everything's blurring together. We didn't together. really talk about it. But in a nutshell, <clears throat> uh, I highly recommend. You can get so many places in Japan on the bullet train within a couple hours. You know, we the, ta- Takayama, uh, Hakone, Nara, Kyoto. You know, Tokyo was its own thing. But when you're there, a couple days in Tokyo, and then just get out of that. You know, just yeah. go out and see the countryside. It's it's just it's such an amazing place. That's Holy great. crap! So they always say Tokyo. When you're there, your family. <laughs> Who says that? Yeah, it's a Tokyo. People, that sounds like that Olive, Olive Garden. Garden. Yeah, no, I think it's Tokyo. I don't no, know. I think you I just like. I think you're thinking noodles. Sure when you're there. I think there's a okay, noodle in your in family. your definition of yeah. Japan. Is there a never ending pasta bowl? Yeah, and breadsticks. No, that's that's Olive Garden. No, no, no. You're, see, you're thinking of you're ramen and chopsticks. You're no. starting to combine noodles and. Uh, we really Japan. did. We really did try because I'm not a big cooked fish eater. But yeah. I didn't want to be. Wait, you're not a big cooked fish eater. You no. like raw fish. I like I like sushi, okay. but I don't love like if someone brought me cooked salmon, I wouldn't be able to uh, oh, tolerate yeah. it. It's great. It's all flaky. And so uh, <laughs> yeah, and so um, and just like licking an aquarium. So I, uh, but I said, you know, we're gonna go and we're gonna have the experience. We're gonna, you know, whatever they put in front of us, we're you know, let's eat it. And uh, but then after about a week, it was we ate so many fish faces because they don't. Over there, we're eating these like seven, eight, ten course meals. Everything was really small. Yeah. You're pushing forward to become a Jewish person, Matt. Yeah, I'm just trying as hard as I <laughs> you're, can. You're, you're an honorary Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want 
to be in that family. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah's been working on a million. Boy, you went right from Mystery Science Theater right to Hidden America. You like you came off of uh, Meltdown, MST, yeah. Hidden America. You're already in season two. It was it went like Hidden America ended up editing as we started writing MST, and then as we finished up writing MST, we were shooting um, Meltdown, and as we were editing Meltdown, we or as we were. No, right. Shooting meltdown. We were writing the next season of Hidden America, and then I had to take breaks from that to shoot Mystery Science Theater 3000. You're regular now. Joss Whedon. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell him that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> he might quit Twitter again. Well, it's amazing that. Uh, I mean, when you really look, just sort of talking about 30 years of The Simpsons. Now this is about seven years of the podcast, and then just seeing what has transpired in that time. I mean, when we started the podcast, Jonah, Jonah was still Freeloader's Guide, Jonah. No, no, I was, I was writing on... Um, you were starting to write, we just started writing, uh, you just started working on Web Soup. Web, web Soup, we'd been doing for about a year. About a year, yeah. About about a year. Chris, I don't want to alarm anyone, but uh, out that window, we're in the sky. <laughs> no, 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 man. <laughs> uh, guys, guys, help me. It's a screen uh, saver. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's not, we're not on an airplane all of a sudden. The TV just has a screen saver. I don't understand TV. We're recording in my house, and we're in the, the room that has the TV in it, and uh, Matt uh, was uh, I think upset it's because Apple TV just went into... The sky. Uh, I love it. I, I like love it. Uh, the new Apple TV is is worth it alone for the screensavers. The screensavers are pretty great. They're you don't have great. to look at photos of nature anymore. No, no, it's, no I like yeah. to do city cities. flyovers. Yeah. Oh, look at Paris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at London. <laughs> Paris. I haven't seen Paris yet. Yeah, I've seen Paris, I've seen and San London Francisco, and New, York, New York, and London, San Francisco, oh. and uh, Hawaii. Paris is special. They give it. Maybe it knows that you're Hawaiian, and it's that, it that's does. how smart it is. That's why I see all those Moana ads. It just shows it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to see a movie the other day, and someone behind, uh, in front of me was like, "One for Mona," and I wanted to punch him in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Moana. <laughs> Stupid Hallies. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to see it. Though. Coming here and howling shit up. I'm, I'm looking forward to that movie. Made a ton of money. Good. It means, good for it's good. Is it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> then it can't get it. It's got The Rock. Come on. I love The Rock. I love The Rock too. I finally wa- on a plane. I finally watched uh, Central Intelligence, and yep. it's a very fun movie. Uh, but there's a scene that made me, and I know I was on a plane, so give me that. But I Wait, was. Did you cry during Central I, Intelligence? You know, I tear up when I say I cry on planes. Like I tear up. This one, I started to cry. I started to convulse <laughs> during Central, Central Intelligence. Intelligence. During Central Intelligence. So the Rock is a fat kid the in high school. Sony Pictures classics. Sony uh, Pictures <laughs> classics. The all you need for this movie Fox is a big, ha- a big yeah, heart, Fox heart Fox a little heart. A year, yeah. Uh, a year. Chris, I don't want to alarm anyone, but uh, out that window, we're in the sky. <laughs> no, 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 man. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, guys, help me. It's a screen uh, saver. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's not. We're not on an airplane all of a sudden. The TV just has a screen saver. I don't understand TV. We're recording in my house, and we're in the, the room that has the TV in it. And uh, Matt uh, was uh, I think upset it's because Apple TV just went into the sky. Uh, I love it. I, I like love. It. Uh, the new Apple TV is is worth it alone for the screensavers. The screensavers are pretty great. They're you don't have great. to look at photos of nature anymore? No. Oh, no, I like yeah. to do city cities. flyovers. Yeah. Oh, look at Paris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at London. <laughs> Paris? I haven't seen Paris yet. Yeah, I've seen Paris I've seen and San London Francisco, and New, York, New York, and London. San Francisco. Oh. And uh, Hawaii. Paris is special. They give it Maybe it knows that you're Hawaiian, and it's that, Maybe it that's does. how smart it is. That's why I see all those Moana ads. It just shows it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to see a movie the other day, and someone behind, uh, in front of me was like, one for Mona, and I wanted to punch him in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Moana! <laughs> Stupid Hallies. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to see it, though. Coming here and howling shit up. I'm, I'm looking forward to that movie. Made a ton of money. Good. It means, good for it means it's good. Is it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> then it can't get it. It's got The Rock. Come on. I love The Rock. I love The Rock, too. I finally went on a plane. I finally watched uh, Central Intelligence, and yep. it's a very fun movie. Uh, but there's a scene that made me, and I know I was on a plane, so give me that. But I Wait, was. Did you cry during Central I, Intelligence? You know, I tear up when I say I cry on planes. Like I tear up. This one, I started to cry. I started to convulse <laughs> during Central, Central Intelligence. Intelligence. During Central Intelligence. So The Rock is a fat kid the in high school. Sony Pictures classics. Sony uh, Pictures uh, <laughs> classics. The all you need for this movie Fox is a big, ha- a big yeah, heart, Fox heart Fox a little heart. Jane Austen's Johnson. Central Intelligence. Yes. It's a uh, prequel to La La Land. Right. Uh, okay. so, there's, there's, you know, the whole idea is that he's like a, uh, like a fat kid uh, in high school, and he gets made fun of by this bully. Uh, you know, fast forward years later, he looks like The Rock because he is, uh, he's Dwayne Johnson, sure. and he's, uh, he's confronted by his childhood bully, played great by uh, Jason Bateman, and then uh, like Jason Bateman's just tearing him down, and then Kevin Hart's going, "Come on, get him!" 
Come on, you could take him. And then the rock is kind of froze. He's kind of freezes up. Dwayne Johnson freezes up and like, doesn't know how to handle the situation. Then looks into a reflection and sees his high school self. And then you started crying. And then I started to cry. <laughs> and then I, and I, 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 I might've said this out loud. The only weight you can't lose is in your eyes. Oh, Jonah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I was crying. I was crying. Every, every throw though. up Thursday post picture that you post. And all, that's all I see. Every time I look in the mirror, you uh, never get past, you never get past your 13 to 15 year old self. You what is it about those years? Because also, I have a theory that most people's favorite movie or uh, music or something like very significant to them creatively uh, is like 12. Uh, that's the age I always say. Like, it's like when I, I ask a lot of people, what's your favorite movie? They say it, and it usually comes out around when they're 12. I have a couple theories on that. Oh, uh, I see. Promote like the. Doing it for them. Maybe you Not don't. For I, I don't know. I just kind of feel like do we? it's great if you, if you find vegetarianism and veganism if that if that's great for your life fantastic i don't begrudge anyone anything but but why why go some to someone else's thing and go you're not doing this right fuck you you should well i don't know you don't have to come here you can, yeah you can go other places that's an odd part of uh i think of instagram is that people can post on it's your personal space they're posting on <laughs> Well, yeah, and Felicia posted a picture of Thanksgiving turkey, and a bunch of people yelled at her on Facebook, like, this is offensive. Like, but you don't have to go here. You can oh, uh, follow Lydia, other. Lydia posted a picture of her uh, gun training, a like, yeah. video of her gun training, which was so rad looking uh, when she was doing, she was working on, like, the up close yeah. stuff. Um, and then, like, it's like someone, like, was like, this is glorifying gun violence. And, like, uh, Lydia had, like, the sweetest response. She's like, she's like, please don't come into my space and say negative things. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because, yeah, she, she's, been, she's been weapons training because, you know, she wants to do, like, action movies yeah. and horror movies. It and, looks and, really cool. And also, she feels like it's really important to understand, to learn so that she understands how weapons work to, to make them safer. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not she's not doing it to glorify violence. She's doing it for her own growth. And yeah, it, it, this is sort of a weird. I do feel like this, there's a a lot of people now who've been so accustomed to their own safe space. They feel like I got to put my safe space over in your space, or everything is so algorithmically coded to make everyone to give everyone exactly what they like. That if something isn't what someone likes, they fucking can't deal. Yeah, like I just don't follow things that I don't agree that I people I don't like or things that I don't like or yeah. And then you get doesn't that narrow people. your worldview. That's always the problem. The you bubble. Know what I mean? That's what they talk about. Yeah. The bubble. It's, oh, you live in a bubble. You don't understand the other things, the other side, the other stuff going on. Well, um, I do. You know, Greg Proops had an amazing. Oh my god. I, this quote has been ringing in my head for weeks since Blaine Capach told me about it, but he was. Uh, I don't remember where he was, maybe at the Irvine Improv or something, but it was, you know, 15 years ago. And he was telling some political jokes, and then he started to get some hisses and boos and, from the audience. And he goes, hey, 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 it's okay to laugh at something you don't agree with. It's called <laughs> sophistication. And I was like, oh, what a great... And he totally got the crowd back oh, on that's that. that's funny. Yeah, but it, it's... I think one of the saddest... And I don't want to talk about politics at all. Yeah. But I think one of the saddest things that I've... Well, one of the many sad things that I've seen is that we've come to this place where if someone doesn't ag agree with you on something, that they're instantly your enemy and fuck them and you want got to destroy them and you can never. It's like, what's wrong with polite discourse or what's wrong with saying like, well, I don't agree with you on this point or I don't support this thing, but you're a person, I'm a person, you know. Most to see if she's pregnant. For anyone who doesn't know, Matt and Dory started a podcast to chronicle their journey. We did. And uh, and it's great. What a great idea. I mean, I'm glad you guys were open to that because I, I really think not only is it will it be interesting for people to hear the process, but I think it will also help demystify. I think it will help people who are considering it. It's fascinating. To, uh, like we had just like when we started doing it, we had talked to people in our lives and like people you wouldn't know have already gone through this and then we started to find a lot of people that I know and that she knows have done IVF or are doing IVF and a lot of us at the same clinic at California Fertility Partners in Westwood and uh, it just became like, oh, we should sort of like, why is this such a weird stigma on mm -hmm. this? And like I would talk about it openly and then you know, a relative of ours had the same thing as me, but we, they had never mentioned it out loud. And then I was talking about it and then they were like, oh, well, same thing with me. And I Is like, the podcast called Defying God's Will? 
That's the subtitle. <laughs> it's close. I think it's called Matt and Dory's Excellent Podcast. That's Excellent great. Adventure. That's great. It's Excellent no, I, Adventure. I see, Excellent I did, Adventure. I, did, I, did, I think adventure. I saw your post uh, about Please that. subscribe <laughs> on uh, iTunes. We appreciate it. Uh, it's a it's a good podcast because like we really like do it. The content we get not only is it like what we've gone through that week because it's constantly something. Uh, but we take questions. People email us. We have a voicemail line. Oh, that's uh, great. People call us. Are you going to take it th- when she gets pregnant? Are you going to take it through the pregnancy? I or think are you we're going to th- take it through our deaths. Okay. Yeah. Great. I mean, so. it, it is a it is pretty cool because with if you guys start it now, the idea of this morphing podcast, or you yeah. can you, know, you can even change the title as yeah. it goes along. Year one, year two. Well, once people kind of get comfortable, like once people are in. Listening to you guys, yeah. then it 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 can it can transition. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting too because then it can turn into like a parenting podcast. Are you going to do it again, or is she, you guys going to do one? We, well, I'll tell you what. If we do, we want to have two kids, uh, if this if this female embryo doesn't take, we have a male embryo that's rated much higher than this female one. <sighs> Fucking Hollywood. I mean, <laughs> come on, come on, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. No, it's okay. a great joke. Okay. Why are you okay. saying, come on, it's not funny? All right, all right, all right, all right. Someone's, I, I, I laughed someone's laughing on a train right now. Yeah, I or laughed. I was just joke. yelling at myself in my head. Like, no. no was also, great. it was a little delayed because I couldn't think of a better one, and there, there it was. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. that's okay. good. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we, had two, we, had, we did two rounds of IVF. We ended up getting two viable embryos, and they, every clinic rates them differently. This, so this clinic rates it on a scale of one to five. And the female embryo was 3.5. And then our doctor got very excited about the male embryo, which is 4.5. It's like, this is a great embryo. It matter? It doesn't matter. As long as we're there, half listening. As long as we're there, as long as there as it doesn't matter. Katie's there, half listening. I'll be flying in from, uh, from Reno. But man, what a, what, a cr- what a crazy year it's been for everyone. And so that's why it's been so difficult to get the sister wives together. Because Matt's Sorry, I just looked over time. my shoulder and saw a prancing antelope. <laughs> yep. Oh, well, yeah. it's an impala. Oh, I thought he was like... Oh, it's an impala? It I is thought, an impala. I thought he was... Foolish me. I thought it was just a massive fart <laughs> propelling no. it forward. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt, Matt is working on the Goldbergs. Yep. So that's taking up full time, and then taking up uh, a lot of time working on the uh, the IVF. Ever IVF. ever pushing forward to become a Jewish person, Matt? Yeah, I'm just trying as hard as I <laughs> you, can. You You're an whatever. honorary Goldberg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be in that family. <laughs> Jonah's been working on a million. Boy, you went right from Mystery Science Theater right to Hidden America. You like you came off of uh, Meltdown. MST, yeah. Hidden America, you're already in season two. It, was, it went like Hidden America ended up editing as we started writing MST. And then as we finished up writing MST, we were shooting um, Meltdown. And as we were editing Meltdown, we or as we were you know, write, shooting Meltdown, we were writing the next season of Hidden America. And then I had to take breaks from that to shoot Mr. Science Theater 3000. You're a regular Joss Whedon. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell him that. Um... <laughs> he might quit Twitter again. Well, it's amazing that, uh, I mean, when you really look, just sort of talking about 30 years of The Simpsons, now this is about seven years of the podcast, and then just seeing what has transpired in that time. I mean, when we started the podcast, Jonah, Jonah was still Freeloader's Guide. Jonah. No, no, I was I was writing on. Um, you were starting to write. We just started writing. You uh, just started working on Web Soup. Web, web Soup. We had been doing for about a year. About a year, yeah. About uh, a year. Chris, I don't want to alarm anyone, but uh, out that window, we're in the sky. <laughs> no, 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 man. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, guys, help me! It's a screen uh, saver. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's not. We're not on an airplane all of a sudden. The TV just has a screen saver. I don't understand TV. We're recording in my house, and we're in the, the room that has the TV in it. And uh, Matt uh, was uh, yeah, I think upset it's because Apple TV just went into the sky. Uh, I love it. I like love a, uh, the new Apple TV is is worth it alone for the screensavers. The screensavers are pretty great. They're you don't have great. to look at photos of nature anymore. No, no, it's, no I like yeah. to do city cities. flyovers. Yeah. Oh, look at Paris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at London. <laughs> Paris. I haven't seen Paris yet. Yeah, I've seen Paris, I've seen and San London Francisco, and New, York. New York, and London, San Francisco, oh. and uh, Hawaii. Paris is special. They give it. Maybe to it knows that you're Hawaiian, and it's that, it that's does. how smart it is. That's why I see all those Moana ads. It just shows it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to see a movie the other day, and someone behind, uh, in front of me was like, "One for Mona," and I wanted to punch him in the back <laughs> of the head. <laughs> Moana. <laughs> Stupid Hallies. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to see it. Though. Come in here and howling shit up. I'm, I'm looking forward to that movie. Made a ton of. And the, the thing is, if you take a year off, 
you probably would have to do some work to get momentum back. Yeah. But if you take a week or two off, you're fine. Yeah. No one's going to even know you were gone. <laughs> you're, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's no, totally... it's a... But uh, one of my plans when I'm done shooting in America is to get LASIK. You're gonna do it. I got I got approved. Uh, I got approved for the 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 process. CISO said okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the worst part when I said like I like I I tweet something about uh, LASIK and so many people were like, but what about your look or your some people said brand or your identity and I was just like, if uh, you know, You're like bro, what? that's what that's what <laughs> prescriptionless lenses are for, yeah, bro. Yeah. But what more reason to do it than yeah. To you know, to yeah. forego any idea that what I wear. Can I just is make a I recommendation? Am? Sure. Just a little. Just just think about it. Don't say no right away. Get tattoo of glasses frames on your. That over was your the, eyes. actually the plan. Yeah, yeah. I was going to do like a I've leopard prince cat eye. Really? Yeah. Of course. Of course. Who I've does? Seen of course, I've that's seen a thing. That. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do it. Horn rim. Uh, but uh, yeah. Face. So that that's I'm looking forward to doing that. That'll that be exciting. Great. Yeah. I would love to be able to not wear glasses. I, I do, I'm, I'm not enjoying contacts. Yeah. At all. Yeah, no. I, What's keeping I tried you from them it? and I couldn't do it. Well, I don't know. First of all, I don't know if I have the kind of... Maybe I do. My eyes are pretty bad and I have astigmatism. I, I'm farsighted. Okay. So, I, uh, so really I just need them for reading and general eye strain. Yeah. And so I can't just wear glasses around the world unless they were bifocals. Yeah. Uh, even though there are transitional lenses, I just so I just wear contacts and I don't enjoy them. But the LASIK process and what April went through was so horrifying. Yeah, I know, I know. You did, you did it. Katie did it. I know you say it's fine, but, but then, then April April, April had a thing where they it didn't heal properly, and, and so she had this weird thing. And there were like three days of her life where she was like, "I just ruined my vision forever," and she was inconsolable yeah but now she they fly, but they had glad. to go in and scrape it off and it had to reheal and all that and i was like oh yeah i don't want to do any of that yeah no i i'm i'm looking forward to the idea of it just mainly you know talk of the like massive earthquake and and you know stuff like that i kind of go well what if i what if i lost my glasses are you thinking about the twilight zone episode i would have started? time to read all, all the, the books. books you finally have them to yourself. Oh, by the way, why couldn't oh. that guy just scramble his way to a drugstore and find another pair of glasses? I guess it was the '60s, so maybe it was yeah, harder to find. Too. I mean, those were pretty thick glasses. Where's he going to? They find were, those? but you know, there's two pairs. Yeah, he should have. There had pairs. there had to be glasses everywhere. If people just got fried, you know, from the nuclear attack or whatever. Gross, it was. Chris. What ghost glasses? <laughs> just floating. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, that's exciting that you're going to do that. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to. I was going to try and do it before we start shooting, but then I realized there's certain things I'm doing in the senior years old, and we haven't really seen many uh, outside of those. You know, after those seasons, it's kind of like it's still around, but like, is it doesn't mean as much to us anymore? Well, the new ones, I think uh, those old ones do. No, they do, but but like, but the new episodes, like just like if you think about the the full spectrum mm. of, you know, and yeah. I'm not saying that it's like bad or it's like you know some things can go on for a long time, but uh, it really is. I think it really is important to to try new things. Like the wall, or another, yeah. an- or, or sidekick with Matt Myra, or sidekick with Matt Myra, or 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 another, you know, or, or season twenty seven of The Simpsons, you know, yeah, yeah, because because it it requires so much energy to to experience new things when you you know you're, you're sort of like um your brain just sort of gets filled up and then at a certain point you just go no more new stuff I yeah, don't got yeah. time I got energy and I think that's when you sort of begin to die creatively or spiritually or whatever because you're not yeah. experiencing new things and experiencing new things is growth but growth takes energy so just gotta you gotta find the energy to try new weird things and experience fun weird things yeah no definitely i agree what are you gonna do uh what are you gonna do in 2017 what's your what's your big uh as of right now we're shooting uh hidden america season two until march and then we'll probably start writing or editing we're editing right after that because it premieres in june um i'm you know we'll wait to see what happens with uh, another season of mr science Theater. i'm sure there'll be another season seems of Mystery like science there would Theater. be I, don't, I can't imagine a situation where there's not well uh, if there isn't kickstart it yeah <laughs> but it's you know that it feels like production schedule wise that would probably start up right when i'm like uh still editing in america so i don't know we'll see We'll see how uh, I haven't. I you know it's been a great year and a year of like uh, three shows, 
I have, but I haven't had any time off to kind of just go on a trip with Deanna. And I'm, I'm kind of starting to really feel that, mm-hmm. you know, that's that, that kind of thing where it's just like we squeeze in like a movie when we can. And it's yeah. just, I'm, but I'm always tired or it's always tough. thinking. Yeah, it's really Real tough. It's tough because I want to, you know, I want to have like these, I want to have new experiences together that have nothing to do with work. It's so interesting that you, yeah, I completely understand what you're saying because this past year or just being with Lydia is really the first time. And I mean, since I don't, I mean, since I don't know when, where I really thought where I'm really excited about breaks because I go, oh, we can, you know, we'll go somewhere. Oh, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna go away. I used to hate them too because I'm no, like, you're losing you, momentum. I was saying you used you're to losing momentum. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. me, I hated them you too, hated just them. like me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hated losing momentum. I always felt like that, and now I feel like no, 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 it's so important. And and just to have a partner to no, I but you probably, were right. You, you were right. Like I shouldn't you have said... texted you, but but I just it it was just sort of the. You know, I'm as big a fan of show that show as you are. So yeah, it, no, it was it was kind of like the thing where when you texted me, I was just like, I was like, I know exactly. It's like I couldn't have been more empathetic to that like that moment, and it was you know, it, it was just two friends being honest with each other. You know, That's, yeah, yeah. So I there was I didn't feel bad that you brought it up to me but uh, it's like because like you said you're just like you know you would probably feel the same i was like yeah i fucking definitely would oh you mean if i had done it and i didn't ask you to be yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's like yeah. hey hey man but but also but also you know it's not lost on me it's like you know things are going pretty well like i shouldn't but it's still funny that there can be things that you still have these human moments where your feelings can still get hurt about silly things or it's like hey you know maybe you don't have to be in everything you know what i mean yeah, like it's yeah. totally fine you but it, it just it was seeing pictures post like because I follow you know all the people who are involved yeah and just seeing all the pictures posted I'm like oh man that looks like so much fun it looked yeah. like so much fun well it's funny you too gotta get over that like, FOMO Chris the, fo- the, the FOMO fear of fear missing, missing out. out oh is that what that is yeah. yeah but you know what's funny about that though is uh, hashtag no FOMO it's because of the way the show is shot it's like you know we there was like friends of ours there that I never saw you know oh, I never, right I, like it's like. I wasn't there when Patton and Felicia were shooting, except for like half of a day. Right, and uh, and some other people we know. Uh, you know, I made sure to be there when Mark Hamill was there for sure. But uh, <laughs> and uh, and but it was like it, there was this funny thing with Mark Hamill where he he was like, "Joel, how'd you find how'd you find Joni?" He's like, "Oh, you know, I just like met him through the Nerdist podcast and." Uh, and he was, uh, we got along and this and that. And like, uh, he's like, oh, is he like a, and I, it's like I was sitting right there, but Mark Hamill's talking about me like I wasn't. And he was just like, oh, did you, does he do like UCB stuff? He's like, oh, yeah, kind of. You know, he did back a while back. He's like, yeah. And then, he, and then Mark Hamill just started naming a bunch of my friends that he really likes. He was like, oh, James Adomian. James Adomian. He's a right? huge James comedy fan. Yeah. And then like, but like the more people he named, the more I was just like, what do you mean you don't know who I am? <laughs> 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 you literally named every uh, other guy. Yeah. 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 But um And hey, does he know Matt Myra boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Dave Matthews band. Yeah. How are Matt and Dory doing? Yeah. Are they yeah. having what a the job? Fuck, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> What's going on? Luke! Hey, I heard uh, Kyle Clark is writing on yeah. some CISO show. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Clark Mary? was great, by the way. Oh, I'm so glad. We, we, uh, we have him over on At Midnight yeah, now. Very, I was very pleased with uh, Kyle Clark, uh, his work on uh, Hit America Season 2. He was, he was fantastic. He's got like at least one bit per episode uh, in there. Yeah, he has a strange encyclopedic brain. Oh. Yeah, sometimes it was... Uh, tomorrow, actually, I got to go in and do ADR. Um, automated dialogue replacement yes yeah, so i gotta go and uh, redo some lines for the riffs uh and the and the host segments sorry you're so bad at those the first time uh, everyone else did too <laughs> I, that's not what i heard <laughs> yeah it's also sometimes it's like you no, know s- sometimes like nope. the little gyro thing yeah, sure the little, the, yeah, <laughs> thing. the little gyro thing like for like crow's mouth was really loud so sometimes if we were talking <laughs> at the same time you just hear wee 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 <laughs> <laughs> Stuff they don't tell you when but you're just a, a fan. But it's a fucking robot. Yeah. It would make that sound. That's yeah. what I'd say yeah. to Joel. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. I really was. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I I texted Jonah right after they finished, and I was like, hey, my feelings were really hurt for some reason. Because I saw everyone doing it, like all these fr- cameos for friends. And I texted Jonah. I was like, hey, I'm a fan of the show, too. I wanted to be in it. And he was like, I'm sorry, it's not, I didn't 100% control that. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, and I didn't want to tell you that it's like, it's like I brought you up a couple times and then it didn't, 
like happen. Like it's like you know. I, there yeah, they don't like times. me. I get it. No, no, but it was just you know, it's it's just this. It's so much other stuff. It, it, it did feel kind of weird. I felt I, bad too, but I didn't bother him with it. Yeah, <laughs> well, but I it was think. it was you know it was odd coming from like you know in America and Meltdown where I'm kind of in charge. Yeah, or, you know of these things, and I came onto the thing, and I'm you know I was just a writer and performer on it. And Joel would sometimes ask, like, hey, man, what do you think about this? I'd be like, well, here's what I I would give me more control. The interesting thing is that you, people are going to assume it's your show. Yeah. And so you're going to get a lot of the, when it airs. The praise. You'll get a lot of the, (laughs) you'll get a lot of the everything. You'll get a lot of everything. will come in. Probably bags of money. Yeah, these are all the things <laughs> millions that people are of dollars. Send you. Yeah. But but I, I, I'm sorry, I feel bad that I said anything. It just my feelings were just hurt for like a minute. And no, I but you probably, were right. You, you were right. Like I when shouldn't you have said... texted you. But but I just it it was just sort of the you know I'm as big a fan of show that show as you are. So yeah, it, no, it was it was kind of like the thing where when you texted me, I was just like I was like I know exactly. It's like I couldn't have been more empathetic to that like that moment and it was you know it, it was just two friends being honest with each other you know That's, yeah yeah so i there was i didn't feel bad that you brought it up to me but I, it's like because like you said you're just like you know you would probably feel the same i was like yeah i fucking definitely would oh you mean if i had done it and i didn't ask you to be yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's like yeah. hey hey man but but also but also you know it's not lost on me it's like you know things are going pretty well like i shouldn't but it's still funny that there can be things that you still have these human moments where your feelings can still get hurt about silly things, where it's like, hey, you know, maybe you don't have to be in everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's yeah. totally fine. You, but it, it just, it was seeing pictures post, like, because I follow, you know, all the people who are involved. Yeah. And just seeing all the pictures posted, I'm like, oh man, that looks like so much fun. It looked yeah. like so. Homer Palooza. Yeah, it goes and like, wow, what a, four foot two. I remember, like, this is what I was, uh, I realized I've been watching the show for a very long time. I, season six. Let's look through season six. Because I think I'm, it might be p- pound for pound. You got monorail and stuff in there, right? Okay, let's see. Now we're going to look at season six. Okay. Bard of Darkness when he breaks, breaks his, his leg. leg. Great. Yeah. Lisa's rival. Yep. Another Simpson Clip Show. Clip show. <laughs> Itchy and Scratchy Land. Itchy and Scratchy Land is great. Sideshow Bob Roberts Bart's is fun. Bart's Girlfriend is great. Treehouse of Horror 5 With where the they do The Shining. Yeah. Uh, Bart's the girl. Shining. The Shining. Do you want to get sued? <laughs> uh, kill Bart. Kill Bart. Oh, this one was just on. This is the S- Grandpa Simpson versus yeah. Sexual Inadequacy. Homer Batman. That's the, the Gummy Venus de Milo. Fear of Flying, where Marge is... Lowenstein. Uh, yes, where Marge's dad turns out to be a flight attendant. Yeah. Oh, the Stonecutters. Stonecutters Stone Cutters. is good. Uh, oh, the story oh, the birth of Maggie's of, that's birth. That's a sweet one. Uh, when Homer becomes crusty. Bart versus Coming. Australia. Which is oh, okay. Yeah. I feel like that's Don't later. tread on me on his ass, right? Yeah. Stars Burns. The uh, critic crossover. Bullfrogs. I'd have called them Cheswuzzles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a star. Uh, yeah. The the Simps, The uh, critic crossover is very fun. Oh, yeah. the the Greyhound episodes. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, oh, when uh, Gums Bleeding Gums, Gums dies. Yeah. Marge becomes a cop. Okay. Now, oh, Lemon of Troy. Guys, come on. Season eight. Was that <laughs> your season? I, season eight for me. Okay. Right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. So I picked season seven. Jonah's got season six, and, and Matt has season eight, which has starts only with moved a... twice. My favorite episode of The Simpsons. Yes, that's great. Hank Scorpio of the Globex Corporation. Yes, uh, mostly improvised lines from from Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks. Then uh, Homer becomes a boxer and gets uh, Dredrick Tatum. Yes, beats the snot out of him, and then it just ends. Rodney Dangerfield. And that's the one where it ends with Mo just with that fan that carries him around. Oh the, yeah, that weird montage of him uh, like yeah. traveling. World. Yes, uh, there's a Dangerfield episode. Uh, uh, Millhouse gets the parents get divorced. Oh, that is. A good oh, that's what kind of borrow a feeling. Oh, yep. where she? Yeah, then uh, Lisa starts dating. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Homer finds his coyote spirit animal. After oh, the that's chili the chili cook-off. I'm missing it. It's, it's happening voice. right now. Yeah. <laughs> go to the and then you have the X Files uh, episodes. Yeah. yeah. See, you see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, Marge, uh, your gimbals. What's the? <laughs> 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 oh, that's the uh, itchy and scratchy and poochy. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Twisted World of Marge Simpson, where yeah. she goes a pretzel wagon. Yeah, that was with Jack Lemon. Itchy, scratchy, and poochy. Oh, Come on, poochy. Okay. Homer's phobia with John oh. Waters. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the Simpsons brother we Niles hard. and Fraser. That's David oh, beer and beer Baron, beer Baron, and the Shit. beer Baron. And Great when, oh. when Kerbopel and Skinner start hooking up, yeah. yeah. And then when they get that fancy dog. And when when uh, Lisa starts helping Burns and he becomes good. Yeah. And then he wants to make money off of. He makes uh, slurry. Yeah. Uh, he makes a slurry. 
And then oh, oh Grimey Grimes. Grimes. Wow. <laughs> yes, uh, there's a Dangerfield episode. Uh, uh, Millhouse get the parents get divorced. Oh, that is a good. Oh, that's episode. what kind of borrow a feeling. Oh, yep. where she? Yeah, then uh, Lisa starts dating. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Homer finds his coyote spirit animal. After oh, the that's chili the chili cook-off. I'm Johnny missing Cash it. It's happening voice. right yeah. now. <laughs> go to the and then you have the X-Files uh, episodes. Yeah. yeah. See? You see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, Marge. Uh, your gimbals. What's the... <laughs> 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 oh, that's the... Uh, Itchy and scratchy and poochy? The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Twisted World of Marge Simpson where yeah. she goes to the pretzel wagon. Yeah. That was with Jack Lemon. Itchy, scratchy, and poochy. Oh, Come on. poochy. Okay. Homer's phobia with John oh. Waters. Yeah, That's yeah. the Simpsons brother we Niles hard. and Fraser. That's oh David beer and beer Baron, beer Baron, and the Shit. beer Baron. And Great when, when Kerbopel and Skinner start hooking up, yeah. yeah. And then when they get that fancy dog, and when, when uh, Lisa starts helping Burns and he becomes good, yeah. and then he wants to make money off of he makes uh, slurry, yeah. Uh, uh, makes a slurry, and then oh, oh grimy Saturday. Grimes, wow, boy, season eight is pretty good, yeah. But I still, you know, Man, I, I don't know. Think I think I we all picked wisely. I think I win. <laughs> so six, seven, and eight. Yeah. If you're gonna watch The I'm Simpsons, sure, and uh, I'm sure five is pretty great. I'm sure <laughs> four is great. Four's They're great. all lovely. They're all great. <laughs> Someone, uh, Caitlin Gill, very funny comic, was trying to tell me that somewhere in like the late teens, mm. uh, there's like a three season like golden era that happens mm. like again. Oh, like later, like way later after a lot of people stop, like a lot of our generation stopped watching. There was another like, like hit after hit. That's so mind blowing to think that show's going to go for 30 years. Fucking 30 years. Yeah. Someone could like someone was probably got like they hooked up in high school when the Simpsons came on, got pregnant. I don't know why it had to be high school. Then that person (laughs) grew up. That person could have had kids. I mean, it's like, yeah, multi-generational. It's insane. Well, this is the Hostful Podcast? Yes, this is the Hostful Podcast. I forget. This is the Simpsons yeah. Podcast. This is the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, uh, is, Allie Gertz. I'm, I'm Allie Gertz. Shortly. Allie could do the uh, theme song for yeah. us. That'd be, Julia's that'd be coming fantastic. in. It's going to be great. That'd be yeah. fantastic. Well, everyone's so... Everyone's been, been so busy, and people always ask for the Hostful episodes, and I say, I say to people... Guys, no, and ladies. no, no hostfuls. That's what you say. <laughs> I say, I you sense... want them, then absolutely not. Because <laughs> my goal is Mabel just to is. fuck people over. <laughs> I like fucking the fans over. That's what I do. I don't like people to be happy. It's the only reason you got fans is to fuck them over. It was a long con, <laughs> but it's working out nicely. I do. I always find it interesting when people are mad at a whatever it is, a company or a franchise, and they go, they're just fucking the fans over because of greed. And I always go, how does that make sense exactly? Why would you fuck your fans over? If you were greedy, you would just want no. I'm the host, but like I'm, the, I'm like a, a small cog in this like grander machine of the show where I realize my uh, – it's like there would be a time where we do like one thing where it's like I had to like do a, like a sleight of hand magic trick and like a prop and like sing a, like part of a song – all in this one take, and then I would, there would be times where I'd like I feel I nailed it, and then they would go, "Oh, we got to do that one again." There was a the camera on the move in to the green screen, the doors opening up messed up. I go, "Okay, oh man, I really nailed that one. We'll do it again." <laughs> and then I kind of mess up a few times, but everything else, like the bots go right, or there was you know the the, the prop or anything. Oh my like, god! So it's like a Rube Goldberg machine. It's just all these things that have to go right for it to to work. So like you know my performance wasn't the, like the top of the totem pole, and that uh, and that was kind of like a thing to kind of get used to as we were doing it because it was just like we were we were going so fast, and you know it was, but it still it still feels like it has that. Nice, and I don't want to say I'm not saying clunky derogatorily. I'm saying it like homespun. The, feels homespun. Yeah, it feels homespun. Yeah. It feels like the old show, to like me. public, like a little public access. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And it felt like old showbiz. You know, like one, like it's like we'd stop, and they're like, "All right, you got to get into your, uh, you know, German sea captain outfit." And I'd run. I get into a German sea captain outfit. I'd come back. We'd oh, you guys are finally thing. doing dust boot. We're dust, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, then I was like, all right, now you got to be, you know, the guy, the, the vil- you got to dress up like the villain from this other movie we're doing. So I'd run and, and then like, you know, like there's these props and there's, you know, magic and, and songs and it felt like old showbiz kind of Jonah's stuff. Jonah's like, description of magic is just pulling handkerchiefs that keep going. Oh, that's that, well, that's my physicality. <laughs> like, you know, slide of hand, yeah. pulling stuff from behind. You know, crow's head or something like that, and you know. Did anything was did it? It didn't ruin anything for you, did it? Like, like being sometimes 
when see you see something made. and then but then when you're involved in the process and you're like oh man this like took some of the magic out or did it make it better no it made me i already had so much respect for the people who made the show all of them um so much already but it made me just totally realize how good they all were because of how hard it is to make the show mm-hmm. the amount of jokes that have to be written the timing of the of the riffs um the the physicality of the you know and i almost i'm on a platform between two trenches for the bots and so like you know it's in joel saying like kind of he had a similar situation where it's like you know you you're going like oh we got movie sign and you know i gotta jump up and uh, and like you know juke around and then like run off the side but that's like i'm on a platform that can kind of get wobbly and then i also have to jump over a um like a gap an open trench like a like a three foot gap and act like i'm just walking forward so like i can't like be like looking down to make sure i'm doing it right it was just it was presented uh, away uh, hang on Damn, I'm happy i Italian. know but you got blue eyes and a light color hair i don't appreciate your tone <laughs> they're like uh appreciate your tone. we've uh you we've... told me to bring you these pies <laughs> <laughs> He can do it. He's a offend dad. everyone. <laughs> uh, bring you these pies. We're backing up the Brinks truck. We'd love you to come out. Uh, please uh, come, come do live with Kelly uh, forever. And uh, you go to you go over to uh, Comedy Central, and you're like, guys, uh, listen, could we shoot in New York? And then Comedy Central's like, well, we have some stages there. Would you do it? Oh, I don't know. I have I don't. I mean, I I I, 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 I can't. Rule it out, but I can't rule it in. Ah. Like you're, getting, you're getting so far ahead of where I'm where I at right know. now. So I know. So I just don't have an answer for that. Chris All is I... going to put like the final piece on in this house, and then he's going to get a <laughs> phone call. So you're like, finally, the house is, hold on, my phone's ringing. <laughs> Boy, sure can't wait to spend forever. Well, Alex Murray, what could this be about? Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> this is the best worst news ever. <laughs> No, I don't know. I mean, all I know is I had an amazing time doing the show. I have so much respect for – she is amazing. She's so conversational. Like, even like even just – look, she's been doing that show for a long time. She doesn't have to – oh, chair. Good thing I didn't uh, sit there. The 900-year-old chair. She doesn't – you know, she could just do it like it's a job, go in, not talk to anyone. When you're on the commercial breaks, she's so sweet and warm and conversational. She fucking goes, go, does does warm up with the crowd, like, oh, funny. grabs a mic, goes and talks to people, answers questions, like makes jokes, gets you involved. Like that woman is incredible. So I, mean, I really, just, we just want to know how's Gelman. I just, great. Everyone's great. That production is when you're there. You're like, oh, this is why this is the number one. Like you, you completely yeah, yeah. understand well, why it's a it machine is, that's where been it is, together where it for is. decades. But it's it's a really lovely vibe, and uh, I don't know. I had fun doing it, and I, I think I'll probably get to do some more, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I feel it, like you're it's a natural. All, it's all fun. Well, I don't know. I just – I don't know. It's There are elements to it that are very podcasty mm-hmm. because it's just conversa- – it, you're just – you're literally you're just, just conversational. Conversation, it's yeah. not – you're not – really following you know they don't really follow a script it's not there wasn't anything to beforehand you gotta you know it was like showed up at eight did the show from nine to ten chatted with her for a while after the show some of the fun that you could also have on sidekick with matt myra (laughs) that's exactly i'd like to do an episode where joan is the host and you're the guest (laughs) that'd be fun fun. that would be fun yeah put me in my place yeah you know me <laughs> you know me. <laughs> oh, I've missed you guys so much. The way he said it. I love you both. What a fucking idiot. Enjoy your burrito, everyone. Enjoy. Your burrito. Enjoy it. Now leaving nerdist.com. Enjoy season, season eight for me. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. So I pick season seven. Jonah's got season six, and, and Matt has season eight, which has starts only with moved a... twice. My favorite episode of The Simpsons. Yes, that's great. Hank Scorpio of the Globex Corporation. Yes. Uh, Mostly improvised lines from from Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks. Then uh, Homer becomes a boxer and gets uh, Dredrick Tatum. Yes, beats the snot out of him, and then it just ends. Rodney Dangerfield. And that's the one where it ends with Mo just with that fan that carries him around. Oh the, yeah, that weird montage of him uh, like yeah. traveling. World. Yes, uh, there's a Dangerfield episode. Uh, uh, Millhouse gets the parents get divorced. Oh, that is. A good oh, that's with kind of borrow a feeling. Oh, yeah. where she? Yeah, then uh, Lisa starts dating. Um, uh, What's his name? Uh, Homer finds his coyote spirit animal. After oh, the that's chili the chili cook-off. I'm missing Cash it. It's happening voice. right now. Yeah. <laughs> and the then chili you have the X-Files episodes. Yeah. yeah. See? 
You see what I'm saying? Uh, guys? Marge, um, your gimbals. What's the? <laughs> 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 oh, that's the uh, itchy and scratchy and poochy. The, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Twisted World of Marge Simpson, where yeah. she goes the pretzel wagon. Yeah. That was with Jack Lemon. Itchy, scratchy, and poochy. Oh, Come on. poochy. Okay. Homer's phobia with John oh. Waters. Yeah, That's yeah. the Simpsons brother we Niles hard. and Frazier. That's oh, David beer, and Beer Baron. Beer Baron. And the Shit. Beer Baron. And Great when, oh. when Kerbopel and Skinner start hooking up. Yep. Yeah. And then when they get that fancy dog. And when when uh, Lisa starts helping Burns and he becomes good. Yeah. And then he wants to make money off of. He makes uh, slurry. Yeah. He uh, makes a slurry. And then. Oh, oh Grimey anime. Grimes. Wow. Boy, season eight is pretty good. Yeah. But I still, you know, Man, I, I don't know. Think I think I we all picked wisely. I think I win. <laughs> so six, seven, and eight. Yeah. If you're going to watch The I'm Simpsons. Sure, and uh, I'm sure five is pretty great. I'm sure four is great. Four is They're great. They're all lovely. They're all great. <laughs> Someone, uh, Caitlin Gill, a very funny comic, was trying to tell me that somewhere in like the late teens, mm. uh, there's like a three season like golden era that happens mm. like again. Oh, like later, like way later after a lot of people stopped, like a lot of our generation stopped watching. There was another like, like hit after hit. That's so mind blowing to think that show's going to go for 30 years. Fucking 30 years. Yeah. Someone could like someone was probably got they they hooked up in high school when the Simpsons came on, got pregnant. I don't know why it had to be high school. Then that person (laughs) grew up. That person could have had kids. I mean, it's like it. Yeah. Multi-generational. It's insane. Well, this is the Hostful Podcast? Yes, this is the Hostful Podcast. I forget. This is the Simpsons yeah. Podcast. This is the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, uh, is, Allie Gertz. Is, I'm, I'm Allie Gertz. Shortly. Allie could do the uh, theme song for yeah. us. That'd be, Julia's that'd be coming fantastic. in. It's going to be great. That'd be yeah. fantastic. Well, everyone's so... Everyone's been, been so busy, and people always ask for the Hostful episodes, and I say, I say to people, guys no, and ladies... No! No Hostfuls! That's what you say. <laughs> With his fucking modern family. God, how much money does that guy have, huh? Oh, the, uh, the modern writer, family? Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, uh, what about Mystery Science Theater? How was the whole experience, and how did, it, how did you get your brain out of the way to not get too stressed about, oh, my God, I don't want to mess this up? Well, when we were shooting it, when we were writing it, it was like everything was kind of, it was, it was fun, and it was very small. You know, it was just us making each other laugh. When we started shooting it, um, we were going so fast. We had... You know, uh, 14 episodes to shoot, like, host segment-wise in six days, five, six days. And, you know, the host segments amount to about a half an hour, like, you know, like 22 minutes. That's like a half hour of sketches. And it's all one shot. And it's everything was going by so fast that I didn't have a moment to kind of go, whoa, look at me in the jumpsuit <laughs> ne- talking to Crow. Right. Uh, that sounds like my friend Hampton or talking to, you know, Servo. That sounds like my friend Baron. It was... Everything was going by so fast, and I was—I realized I was such a—I'm, you know, I'm the host, but like I'm the—I'm like a, a small cog in this like grander machine of the show, where I realized my—it's uh, like there would be a time where we do like one thing where it's like I had to like do a, like a sleight of hand magic trick and like a prop and like sing a, like part of a song all in this one take, and then I would, there would be times where I'd like I feel I nailed it. And then they would go, oh, we got to do that one again. There was a, the camera on the move in to the green screen. The doors opening up messed up. And I go, okay. Oh, man, I really nailed that one. We'll do it again. <laughs> and then I kind of mess up a few times. But everything else, like the bots go right. Or there was, you know, the, the, the prop or anything. Oh, my like, God. So it's like a Rube Goldberg machine. It's just all these things that have to go right for it to, to work. So, like, you know, my performance wasn't the, like the top of the totem pole and that. Uh, and that was kind of like a thing to kind of get used to as we were doing it. Cause it was just like, we were, we were going so fast and you know, it was, but it still, it still feels like it has that nice. And I don't want to say, I'm not saying clunky derogatorily. I'm saying it like homespun the, feels homespun. Yeah, it feels homespun. Yeah. It feels like the old show to like me. public, like a little public access. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And it felt like old showbiz, you know, like one, like it's like we'd stop and they're like, all right, you got to get into your, uh, you know, German sea captain outfit. And I'd run. Again, to a German sea captain outfit, I'd come back. Wait, you guys are finally the, doing dust boot. We're dust, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, then I was like, all right, now you got to be, you know, the guy, the, the vil- you got to dress up like the villain from this other movie we're doing. So I'd run and, and then like, you know, like there's these props and there's, you know, magic and and songs and it felt like old showbiz kind of <laughs> Jonah's stuff. Jonah's like, description of magic is just pulling handkerchiefs that keep going. Uh, that's that, well, that's my physicality. <laughs> like, you know, slide a hand, yeah. pulling stuff from behind. You know, crow's head or something like that, and you know. Did anything? 
was did it, it didn't ruin anything for you did it like like being sometimes when see you see something made. and then but then when you're involved in the process I'm slot crazy how many episodes uh just 10 hmm. and i and i and they'll know quickly yeah, yeah. if people give a crap or not i hope they do but it is a very straightforward game show like it yeah. is a and and fun you know someone said to me on they saw the the preview for it and they go well, this doesn't seem like you at all. And I was like, well, that's part of the reason why I wanted to try something different because yeah. that makes it interesting. But, you know, it takes five hours to shoot an episode. So you have this huge Jeez. chunk of time. And I really actually, there's only one team per show and uh, of two people. And I really got attached to those people because you get to know them and you care about them. And they're yeah. all... Because in between setups, you're just probably just talking to you're them. You're just talking and, and yeah. you know, and everyone was chosen for the show. It wasn't just like a random... It wasn't a typical game show contestant thing they went after people and a lot of this was lebron james's influence but they went after people who were you know pillars of their community or really good people who had something taken away or like they're all good people yeah yeah so you really so when they lose it really it really hurts (laughs) (laughs) but you know in in a five-hour episode a lot of things happen jokes happen not jokes happen you know and so I don't, I don't really know how the episodes were edited. I haven't seen all the episodes. Shit. So I don't, you know, it could just be very, but even so, you know, it, it was really fun and, and, and it was more emotional than I expected it to be. And I'm, I'm so glad I did it. And, uh, even if it goes away immediately, what a great, fun, different thing to try. Yeah. And I always wanted to do a big, a real flashy game show. Yeah. yeah just, yeah. To, just to do it. That's awesome. So it was it was fun. Yeah. That's the wall on NBC. <laughs> NBC. NBC. So, was Tom Brokaw NBC? Yes. Tom Brokaw yeah. NBC Nightly News. <laughs> Jonah Ray Jonah on his podcast. Was by a bear today. Remember that sketch? What? Dana Carvey plays Tom Brokaw who wants to go on vacation so he has to record every possible news story. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one of them is Gerald Ford was mauled by a bear today. <laughs> and he goes, come on, that's not going to happen. You're the one who wants to go on vacation for two months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really a hoot. I totally forgot about that. Great sketch. That is Great a good sketch. sketch. I Oh, by the way, speaking of SNL, Ah, Chappelle's opening monologue was just God damn it, that guy is amazing. He's so good. I'm surprised he didn't light a cigarette during his set. I mean it's obviously an understatement. smoking at the goodbyes. Oh, he was? Yeah. It's yeah, obviously yeah. an understatement to say Dave Chappelle is an amazing comedian, but he really is. Like he's great. He's 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 the best. He's, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna best. get three specials on that. That guy can spin comedy. It just he's fucking ma- it's a he's masterful. Yeah. It's almost disheartening where you're like, well, I'm never going to be that good, so but effortless. I'm so glad. And so I can't just wear glasses around the world unless they were bifocals. Yeah. Uh, even though there are transitional lenses, I just – so I just wear contacts and I don't enjoy them. But the LASIK process and what April went through was so horrifying. Yeah, I know. I know. You did, you did it? Katie did it? I know you say it's fine. But, but then, then April, April, April had a thing where they – it didn't heal properly, and, and so she had this weird thing, and there were like three days of her life where she was like, I just ruined my vision forever, and she was inconsolable. Yeah, but now she they, But they glad. had to go in and scrape it off, and it had to reheal and all that. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to do any of that. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the idea of it. Just mainly, you know, talk of the, like, massive earthquake and, and you know, stuff like that. I kind of go, well, what if I... What if I lost my glasses? Are you thinking about the Twilight Zone episode? I would have time to read all All the the books. books. You finally have them to yourself. By the way, why couldn't that guy just scramble his way to a drugstore and find another pair of glasses? I guess it was the 60s, so maybe it was harder to find glasses. I mean, those were pretty thick glasses. Where's he going to find them? They were, but you know, there's... Two pairs? Yeah, he should have. There had had to be glasses everywhere. If people just got fried, you know, from the nuclear attack or whatever Gross, Chris. What? Ghost glasses. (laughs) Just floating. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's exciting that you're going to do that. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I was going to try and do it before we start shooting, but then I realized there's certain things I'm doing in this season that would... It's not wise to, you know, because there's a bit, hopefully, we're going to find, if I can do it, uh, skydiving. Yeah. in the the Miami episode, we already shot Miami, but we'll shoot somewhere else for it. But uh, and then uh, I went jet skiing, and I accidentally did like fall off the jet ski. Uh, I like wiped out. I didn't know you could like tip those things so so easily. 
<laughs> the whole idea. Not the, that easy. Well, it's like the bit. The whole bit was like, uh, it's like uh, I, I get a, on a jet ski and I, I soup it up with like GoPros. And I, uh, the whole thing is I want to know what it's like to experience the plight of a Cuban uh, refugee floating in the ocean. Jesus so Christ. I go on a Nisizawa X5000 wave breaker. Uh, to see what it's really like. But then I, I, I go, before I realize the, f- the full extent of the struggle that these immigrants go through, let's see what this baby can do. And then it's just like a montage of me like jet skiing around. And when I was doing I was doing these circles and then like tried to like do this other move and it just dipped down and I flew off like over the handlebars. Wow. Uh, and it was very frightening. And you died. I died. I'm a ghost now. Ghost You're a ghost. Jonah. You're going to need ghost LASIK. Yeah, yeah. Ghost glasses. Matt, what were you... I feel like if... We're probably, I don't know if we're going to be able to get together again before the end of the year. So it is right now almost December. So this could be the end of the year hostful podcast. Uh, Unless you guys want to get together again and do an end of year. We do host- another Sunday. Uh, That's not the yeah, fourth. I mean, it, after this next or leg, I'm around. But just in case. 11th is... They feel like, I got to put my safe space over in your space. Or everything is so algorithmically coded to make everyone... To give everyone exactly what they like, that if something isn't what someone likes, they fucking can't deal. Yeah. Like, I just don't follow things that I don't agree, that I, people I don't like, or things that I don't like, or. Yeah, and then you gotta Doesn't that narrow people. your worldview? That's always the problem. The you bubble. Know what I mean? That's what they talk about, yeah. the bubble. It's, oh, you live in a bubble, you don't understand the other things, the other side, the other stuff going on. Well, um, I do, you know, Greg Proops had an amazing, oh my God. I, this quote has been ringing in my head for weeks since Blaine Capach told me about it, but he was, uh, I don't remember where he was, maybe at the Irvine Improv or something, but it was, you know, 15 years ago, and he was telling some political jokes, and then he started to get some hisses and boos and, from the audience, and he goes, hey, 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 it's okay to laugh at something you don't agree with. It's called <laughs> sophistication. <laughs> I was like, oh, what a great, and he totally got the crowd back oh, on that's that. that's funny. But, yeah, but it, it's... I think one of the saddest, and I don't want to talk about politics at all, Yeah, but I think one of the saddest things that I've, well, one of the many sad things that I've seen is that we've come to this place where if someone doesn't ag- agree with you on something, that they're instantly your enemy, and fuck them, and you want got to destroy them, and you can never, it's like, what's wrong with polite discourse, or what's wrong with saying, like, well, I don't agree with you on this point, or I don't support this thing, but... You're a person, I'm a person, you know, most people are trying to do their best. Maybe let's, we don't yeah. have to agree 100% on every point. But there really is now like a, there is so much of an all or nothing kind of a vibe now. Yeah. That's gnarly. It's a, it's a fractured world. It I mean, I don't agree been, with what 90% saying. of what you guys stand for, but we're still friends. Yeah. Very true. That's a very good point. We've done this podcast for years. For years. Sort yeah. of. We sort deal of, with sort it. Sort of for years. You've <laughs> done it with for each years. Other? <laughs> I really do miss having you guys on. I, 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 I really try to explain to people, just so you know, you are heavily missed on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, no. and, and, and people really always want to know when more hostfuls and when Matt and Joan. And I'm like, but they're just, they, you know, they, they have their own lives and they're busy. And I mean, they're, you're these looking are good at it, kids. This know? is a Sunday afternoon. That's, yeah. That's, this well, is you know, that's kind of when had. we started. That's when we would squeeze these in. Yeah. When we first started. You know, we do them at your place. Uh, we do them on weekends. I remember the first one was on a Sunday. I mean, yeah, it was on Super, Super Bowl. Bowl Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But like with the with the amount that we've all gotten so busy, it's like it's all kind of has to. There's an algorithm of time, free time, and it's yeah, just, it's so weird. But it's, because you know, because part of the thing is that I don't. I guess just because of the point of view that I have, I don't read you guys not being able to do the podcast as a negative thing. I view it as, oh my god, they're doing so great. Mm. They don't have time, so they'll come and do it when they have time. So. If people get upset about it, I just go like, but you, you like these guys. You want yeah. them to do well. And, you know, they're, they're both legitimately living their 